Okay, it is 10.02 a.m. I'm going to call the uh, third uh, session of the meeting of the 82nd, I think, World Science Fiction Society business meeting to order. Um, and I am going to recognize uh, Naveed, the head of site selection, who's someone, there we go, oh. Yeah, yeah, uh, come up to the microphone. take my glasses off. Good morning. So we have the results from the voting. Cool. I've not used one of these before. Oh, good. good morning. So I have the results for the voting for site selection for 2026. Uh, we have a winner in terms of LA. They got 452 votes out of a grand total of uh, 531. Yeah. A number of folks. <laughs> as, you can yeah. as you can see, and there were a number of uh, no preference votes. You can um, go to the next slide. <laughs> yeah. So, one vote they all uh, voted preferentially and the other ones they didn't so the first two are um, not, not valid in that sense uh, any questions sorry that's what they wrote <laughs> yeah I, I i don't think the site selection administrator has yet developed the powers to discern what everyone is thinking when they fill out the ballot so, okay, uh, we are still in a business meeting, y'all. Is there anyone who has a question for the site selection administrator? Okay, okay. seeing none, is there any? Yes, this will be um, available. The information, the information that are in the slides will be recorded in the minutes of the business meeting. Okay. Seeing. Um, Are there any other questions? All right. See none. Is there any objection to thanking the tellers and ordering them to destroy the ballots? It is still ordered. <laughs> and now, I believe some folks would like to tell us about a con they're running. Okay. <laughs> as of 2 a.m. this morning, I was writing something to say here because um, so, I wanted to keep this as short as possible for the business meeting. So I'm going to go right into this. And on behalf of L the LA 2026 a bid committee, I would like to thank everyone for granting us this honor to host the 2026 Worldcon. I would like to give a very special thanks to the Southern California Institute of Fan Institute interest, also known as Skiffy Inc., and the California Anime Foundation, both who were generous sponsors of our bid. I'd also like to thank all of you, our friends, our voters, our supporters, and all of whom believed in us. I promise we won't let you down. The trust you have put in us will be met with a world-class Worldcon in two years' time. Before I go any further, I would like to invite all the members of our bid committee, our conference convention committee, or our staff who happen to be here, because this is not happening without them or their support getting here, and I want them to share in this moment. Now just come on up, just to stand behind me in case I pass out. <laughs> This is only a small fraction, sorry, this is only a small fraction of the people who actually have supported us and done favors or, or 
went late night to pick up something to take it someplace else. And, and so uh, this is just why I want these people to be here with me. So with that said, I want to welcome you to <laughs> LA Con V. Yes, we will be the LA Con 5, fifth in the tradition of Los Cons and seventh in World Con in Los Angeles metropolitan area. We are looking forward to seeing you all in the hope that the 27th through the August 31st and 26th Anaheim, California in the United States. Um, Anaheim, as many of you know, is the home of Disneyland, but also so much more. The Anaheim Con Convention Center, which hosted the past three lost LA cons, will be a home base, as will the Hilton Anaheim and the Anaheim Marriott Hotels. Now I'm absolutely thrilled to announce our guests of honor. We start, we start with the genuine tr LA treasure, Barbara Hambly, a writer with over 70 novels and many short stories to her credit, as well as past president of the Science Fiction and Fantasy Writers Association, or SIFWA. From the page to the screen, we are delighted to welcome Ronald D. Moore, the Emmy Peabody and two-time Hugo-winning screenwriter and producer who brought us the revival of Battlestar Galactica, plus Outlander for All Mankind, and of course, so much Star Trek, another California native. From the screen to the comics, New York Times best-selling cartoonist Colleen Doran. You know her work as a comics and graphics novelist, illustrator, penciler, inker, colorist, and working with the likes of Alan Moore, Anne Rice, Dave, Peter David, Neil Gaiman, and Terry Pratchett. Someone we are excited to introduce to you is Dr. Anita Gumpta. She's a scientist and engineer who has worked on NASA, on the Dawn spacecraft, the Mars rover, Curiosity, and even a project called um, Cloud, Cloud Atom Laboratory on the International Space Station. She's now a proponent for the hydrogen-powered flight, a huge sci-fi fan, and also an Los Angeles native. <laughs> resident, resident, sorry, she's not native. <laughs> There's also Hugo Award-winning illustrator Tim Kirk, again a Los Angeles treasure. Yeah. Tim has won awards for both fan and professional art. He's worked with the Walt Disney Company, and he's even a Disney Imagineer, a great way to celebrate our Anaheim location. The lovely and effervescent longtime fan and convention supporter Jerry Sullivan is our here, who is supposed to be here. <laughs> and we are delighted to welcome her as LA Cons fan guest of honor. And, it, and it's an honor long deserved. We are also welcoming a very special guest, the Eisner Award Hall of Fame inductee Stan Sakai. Stan is a celebrated artist and creator of Yasagi Ojimbo, heavily influenced by Japanese cinema and history, but touching into the world of fantasy. He's a legend in our town, and we, and let me tell you, he's one of my favorites, so, and we can't wait to see him. <laughs> And finally, we are over the moon to announce our Toastmaster, none other than the il illustrator and creator, Ursula Vernon, sometimes known as T. King Fisher. <laughs> if you are looking for more information on LA Con, Five. I am pleased to say that there's going to be plenty of it. I invite you to visit our website at lacon.org. Our website will go live shortly after I send a text message back to LA to flip a switch. Um, Sean Lyon, our vice chair, who's been up waiting late <laughs> to, to, to do that for us. Uh, also, our social manager, Taylor Deathridge, is up at dawn in Chicago to make sure everything goes live as well. So I have a great team working for me right now. <laughs> I believe that this is um, this is a quick way to finish our constant this yeah this is my wait I can't talk all of a sudden I am so sorry um, <laughs> I believe this is the time we're allowed to respond to questions for the floor but we are very happy to do so but I'd also like to invite you to consider asking those questions at our table today tomorrow or at our party this evening the business meeting still has a large number of agenda items they need to get through and I'd like to help them out as much as possible. Once again, thank you so much for this great honor and we look forward to showing you a wonderful time in 2026. And I, if you have questions that can't wait, you can ask them now, correct? Yes, so I'm going to ask you, so per our standing rules, we have 15 minutes of question and answer time for both 2025 and 2026. I'm going to ask unanimous consent of the body to shorten that to five minutes each. Are there any objections? Hearing none, is there any questions for 2026? Cool. Oh, wait, right. there's one behind us. Oh, don't spill water. Um, here, I'll hold it while Thank you ask the question. Uh, yes, do you have a mark protection committee member selected? I do. 
and I have a fallback because we may have one of the gentleman I had selected um, on the ballot to become a member. So you'll tell them after the balloting is done? Yeah, I'll, I'll tell after balloting. Okay. So since Thank that you. wasn't in the microphone, we will find out the answer after yeah. the balloting is yes. done. Uh, if you have not already pre-supported us and voted and you need to upgrade, you may come to our fan table this weekend and we can help you that there. If you have not voted, uh, registered at all, you can go to lacon.org and, uh, and, and to, you go to the registration at that location. I have a PR0 and there's some people back here with them that will be happy to hand them out. I'm going to interrupt It'll really quickly. Sorry. Can somebody who, very nice go see if they can grab like some cloth napkins from the bar area? so we don't have too much of a technical breakdown up here. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. All right, seeing I have no more questions, am I good to go, Jesse? Uh, yeah. All right. Thank you so much, and I look forward to seeing you all. <laughs> okay, is there anyone here from 20... Is there anybody here from Seattle 2025 who's available to answer questions? Okay. Thank you. Is there any or are there any questions for Seattle 2025? I just want to say, hey, y'all, I'm Kevin Black. I'm the division head for publications for Seattle 2025, building yesterday's future for everyone. Please try to Happy limit to the chatter questions. in the room. When do you plan to open up the phone? Yeah, we have a target date to if open we could, up. Can you restate the question? Uh, the question was, when do we plan to open up the hotel block? Um, we have a target date, not precise date, but we're targeting October for our five hotels. Information about our five contracted hotels and the rates are available on the website as they have been for the past year. Uh, Blue mic, please. Sorry. Yes, that sounds like it's on. Um, Andrew Adams, is it true you're planning to, to run a partially virtual hybrid business meeting um, if so, is there anything we can do to persuade you to, at the very least, um, conduct uh, extensive consultations with people in this room and others before you make a final decision to do so? Would you like, huh? would you like me to answer the question, or you can take it either way? Sure, go ahead and answer that question. Okay, just uh, since I have been asked to be the business meeting chair for Seattle, there have been conversations about the possibility of doing an online meeting. There have been no final decisions. Anything would be with extensive cold consultation, including with the uh, study committee that we created yesterday. Seems like that was yesterday. On behalf of last night's masquerade participants, have you appointed a masquerade director yet? That is a great question. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and uh, that'd be a great question for our events division head if he was here in Glasgow. I don't know. I don't believe so. I haven't heard, which is a clue, but I don't actually know the answer. Yeah. Yeah, we have a plan for where the business meeting will be. Uh, we have some space set aside in the signature room, which is on the fifth floor of the uh, Summit Convention Center. It is a gorgeous room. It will be the, if, if it is in fact held there, it will be the nicest room that the business room has been in, I think, in a very long time. But uh, all plans as far as space allocation are, you know, just plans tentative at this time. Seeing no more questions, hope to see you in Seattle in 2025.
Okay. Um, so, well, first I was going to do announcements. Okay. So, uh, for those of you who have not uh, stopped by the business meeting yet, I just want to do some quick introductions so you know who all of these people are. Um, my name is Jesse Lip. My pronouns are they, them. Uh, I am the chairperson. My form of address is mixed chair or mixed chairperson. Uh, we have Linda Denneroff, she, her, serving as emergency holographic secretary as Alex Axe, they, them, is unfortunately uh, stuck in their hotel room with uh, COVID. So. Thank you so much to Linda for stepping in at the last minute, um, and we hope Alex is feeling better. Um, then we have Martin Pine, he, him, who is serving as our parliamentarian. Warren Buff, he, him, who is deputy presiding officer. Ira Alexandra, they, them, who is serving as our timekeeper. Um, out, well, right at the door there is Chris Hensley, he, him, who is serving as our floor manager and not official business meeting staff, but super helpful person, is Ron Oaks, which I believe is he, him, um, who has been helping out with tech stuff. Um, and uh, sadly, all the way across the Atlantic Ocean is Jared Dashoff, he, him, who has been serving as our advisor. I mean, he's happy to be across the Atlantic Ocean. He's not bothered about it, I am. Um, so that is uh, the team that we have. Um, we have ballots for the Mark Protection Committee as well as the Committee on Investigation that was um, created yesterday. Those are out in our little lobby area. Um, we will be closing the balloting at 1030. Um, so I would encourage folks who have not yet done so um, to go grab a ballot. I don't know that there is a home key. And I will also just remind folks that um, our secretary didn't bring tech thinking they were going to be secretary, so your grace is appreciated when we have stuff happening up here. Um, yes. It's a question of privilege affecting, uh, it's a question of privilege affecting the assembly. Next chairperson, could you, oh, thank you, I forgot it was tapped down. Uh, Next chair person, could you please remind people on how to fill out a preferential ballot in specific the, uh, the question that I heard being tossed around is, do I just stop at three or do I keep going? Um, thank you. So you, I mean, you can stop at three if you want to, um, but you can also keep going. Um, you can rank as many um, folks as you wish or as few folks as you wish. It's rather similar to this thing called the Hugo Awards that some of you might be familiar with how we vote for. Um, so yes, our balloting is done by preferential ballot. Um, okay, so to summarize what we did yesterday, um, after we dispensed with the Ds, sorry, I'm hearing chatter in the room and I just wanna make sure that we're okay. okay. Um, yesterday, after we dispensed with the Ds, um, we moved on to our new constitutional changes and the first pass of that. Um, I would like to let you all know that uh, according to the timestamps in the Discord, it, uh, we got through the first pass of F1 through F11 in 45 minutes, y'all. So we are going to start up with the uh, first pass starting with F12. I am going, because I know folks are balloting, I am gonna give you all five minutes to um, retrieve ballots, cast the vote, if you need a quick bio break, all of that. So I'm not quite gonna call it a recess, but we're gonna call it a pause. Yeah, we're gonna stand at ease until 10.25. I will reiterate this as a point of personal privilege when the meeting is more formally back in session. But please be careful, especially when the meeting is in session, with standing or walking down this middle aisle. We have the two streaming cameras at the back there. 
And if anyone is standing at the rear or walking down this middle aisle, it can seriously obscure the cameras for the front, especially the camera focused on mixed chair. Thank you. So to be clear, um, at 10.30, the floor manager, if you want to go put your ballots in the bag now, you can. At 10.30, um, the floor manager is going to come in and collect the ballots if for folks that are still holding on to theirs. I have been reminded, um, and my apologies, uh, I have been reminded and my apologies that there um, is no specific space for writing candidates on the ballot. That is still something you can do. Um, if you would like to write a name on the back and rank it, we will uh, record that. And my apologies for forgetting to include a write-in space when I was creating the ballots last night. So I'm sorry about that. Okay, it is 1026, so we're going to um, get moving. Um, so it's been requested that I remind people where we ended up with F11, um, which is where we ended yesterday. So um, the secretary could get, the secretary will tell me if I'm incorrect, but I believe that we tried to divide it and we didn't because I said we couldn't, and then we tried to postpone it and we didn't, and we tried to refer it, and we didn't. And so it's before us as it is in the agenda once we return to it. Um, so essentially, we didn't do anything to F11, is what we did yesterday. Um, so for those who were not here yesterday, as a reminder, so we are in the first pass, because I, I have still yet not been given a better name for it. Um, and so 
during the first pass, the uh, debate on the main motion is not in order. The motion to amend in all of its forms is not in order. The per unanimous consent of the body yesterday, the motion to refer to committee to report back next year is in order, though not something like committee of the whole. Um, and debate time for both motions to postpone indefinitely and to refer to committee is automatically set at two minutes. Um, also, motions to take up items out of order or to postpone until a definite time will not be in order. So, basically, what this, the function of this is, is to somewhat quickly go through these items, figure out which things we want to postpone indefinitely, refer to committee, and which ones we want to actually take up today. Yes. Next chair, Kevin Stanley, he, him. Yes, those of you who were here yesterday know this, but I believe there are a few extras. Is the motion to object to consideration available at this, uh, during the first pass? Yes, any motion that was not explicitly, that is not explicitly prohibited is in order with the qualification that, as stated in the agenda, if you're trying to do a thing that's gonna ensnare us, I will still rule that out of order since the point is to not get ensnared. Yes. Harry Ann Lurie, she, her point of information. What is the difference between postpone indefinitely and object to consideration? Okay, uh, the motion to postpone indefinitely requires a two thirds vote and is debatable. And if it passes and debate can go into the merits of the main motion. And if it passes, the item is postponed until the heat death of the universe and is there not no longer before this body. The motion to object to consideration um, is in order only immediately when the item comes up. If you wish to object to consideration, you can do so by just standing up and, and saying that you object to consideration. It is not debatable um, and it requires a three quarter vote of the body. And if it passes, the um, item is immediately killed. Is that clear? Okay, are there any other questions about the process before us? It, it, yes. Yep, that's what I was gonna say. Yep, it's 1030 and so while we get started, the uh, floor manager is going to come through with the bags to collect ballots. So the item before us is F12, site selection by the Worldcon community, which is on a page that I'm finding. 44, thank you. Is there anyone wishing to make a motion about F12? Uh, you, Perry Ann, sorry. Is it not on? Is it on now? Okay. Perry Ann, Lurie, she, her. I move to postpone indefinitely. Okay. P point of order. Uh, it was my understanding based on conversations that there are members interested in objecting to consideration for this item and if they wish to do so, they would need to do so now prior to before we could hear a motion to postpone indefinitely. Okay, the I have not yet I had not yet Stated the motion to postpone indefinitely, if I remember correctly, and so therefore it is in order for the member to withdraw it, and therefore it is in order for Chris Hensley to object to consideration of the motion. As a reminder, just so we're clear, if you wish to object to consideration, when I state the item, you can just stand up and say, object to consideration of the motion, and that's the proper way to do that so that you get in first. Um, okay, so the motion, uh, the F.12, Chris Hensley has objected to consideration and that has been seconded. This is not debatable and requires a three quarters vote. All those in favor of not considering the motion, please raise the hand. Thank you. Those against, that was not a three quarters vote. I think it might not have even been a majority. Um, and so it does not pass. And so uh, the motion is still before us. Harry Ann Lurie, she, her, I move to uh, postpone indefinitely. Okay. The, uh, it has been moved and seconded to postpone F12 indefinitely. 
debate time is automatically two minutes. Do you wish to speak to it? Yes, I do. Um, I think this is a terrible idea that purposefully disenfranchises WISFIS members who are either not wealthy enough, not well enough, or unable to get travel documents to vote on things. And this is a terrible, terrible idea, and we should kill it now. Thank you. Is there anyone wishing, that was a speech in favor. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? Um, I'm gonna recognize Mr. Eggs Flake as the maker of the motion. Uh, Donald Eastlake, he, him. Um, first of all, I'd like to foreshadow that uh, assuming the objection to consideration fails, I plan to move to divide the question because there are two different items here. Uh, secondly, I think this is a great idea. I mean, why are Worldcons what they are? It's because of the Worldcon community. To a great extent are the people here in this room, which to a great extent are people who attend the Worldcon. Essentially, there seems to be a big motion today in this uh, site selection and various other aspects towards unbounded virtual voting. Well, we've seen what that does. That's why Chengdu was selected. There were over 1,500 ballots produced by people, well, produced, all of which have names on them, but you know, it's not clear that they were ever really signed by the people, or the people even know they were signed. It's not, it's pretty clear that those people didn't pay the voting fees. 10 seconds. Allow, I'll recognize the maker, or you, sorry. I, I, I'm not yeah, sure that that part of Don's statement was really Ye Yes, um, the, the member, the point of order is that the, especially final portion of the speech was not in order. Okay, hold on. This is not a debating society. This is not a debating society. The, not like that, y'all. Um, so the member's point is that because the debate included allegations about specific people or groups of people that it is not in order. My sense is that it was, it was certainly on the line but I believe the debate was in order, but I will encourage the body as it debates this issue, both during the motion to postpone indefinitely and should there be further debate, to be very careful in how we talk about members of our society and um, allegations of conduct. Okay, that was a speech against. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor of postponing indefinitely? Um, in the back, Gareth. Garrett Kavanagh, he, him. Mixed chairperson, my objection to this motion is that it disenfranchises people like myself who do come to Worldcon but cannot travel to many Worldcons. I am a friend, super friend for Dublin 2029, which I will not be able to vote for if this motion passes. As, a, as by the time the vote comes up, I will not be suitable. That was a speech against, is there, er, in favor, sorry, of postponing indefinitely. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? Um, in the back with the yellow shirt, or yellow on your shirt. We have nine seconds remaining against. Nikolai Plum, he, him. The uh, statement that uh, travel is required for this uh, is not true because the um, people can have voted in person beforehand, so I feel that it did not disfranchise anyone. Thank you. Time. Please, please, please bring your badge to the secretary. All right, time against has elapsed. How much time do we have in remaining in favor? 24 seconds. Okay, is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? I am going to rem No, that was, that was a speech in favor of the motion, but against postponing indefinitely. Yes. Okay, um, I'm gonna recognize, and you can't come back up here until we're done with the item, just as a reminder. Good morning, Warren Buff, he, him. Mixed chairperson, I do believe this discourages new participants in our community. 
and we have gained many wonderful new participants by good get out the vote drives in locations that Ten seconds. have not had world cons before, particularly including the Helsinki bid, which defeated by bid for DC in 2017. And I think that them driving out the vote Time. was a good. Time for debate has elapsed, so we will move to a vote. If you are in favor of postponing indefinitely consideration of F.12, please raise the hand. Thank you. Those against? I'm going to say the motion passes. Okay, and so F.12, it, is somebody calling for division? Okay. If, if you want to call for division, please do so loudly and proudly rather than me just having to pick it up from the fact that there are murmurings. Okay, we've, it's been called for division, so we are going to take a standing counted vote. So I will ask in a moment everyone in favor to stand up. Um, the floor manager, we will count off in sequence and the floor manager will help us do that. Yes. Yes, it is still the same vote that we just took to postpone indefinitely. We're just making sure we got the count correct. Is there another question or? The, I'm sorry, oh, the voting cards, sorry, yes. You'll either stand or raise your voting card um, and the floor manager will help us count off and then we will, once that's done, we will do the same for those against. So, all those in favor of postponing indefinitely, please stand. Is there an additional vote in the back? Okay, is there anybody else wishing to vote in favor who was not counted? Okay. All those opposed to postponing definitely, please stand or raise the card. Okay, 48 in favor and 25 against is not a two-thirds majority, and so the motion is not postponed indefinitely. Okay, hold on, what, com what committee do you want to refer it to? And Uh, Mr. Chairperson, I move to refer to a newly formed committee to be called the Committee of uh, Long-Term Consideration with a remit to report back to the business meeting of 2125. <laughs> uh, th th this committee to have one member, I volunteer. Okay. That is out of order. <laughs> <laughs> may, may I, is there any amendment I may make a motion to bring it to me? 
if you wish to bring it in order, you would need it to report back at a reasonable time, have a reasonable, and have a reasonable um, number of people making up the committee. Um, well, uh, shall we say 2026? Uh, we, sorry, yeah. by a reasonable time, it has uh, to be next year. Okay, ne next year, uh, five people, I, I do volunteer, otherwise, uh, well, chair, chair's election of members, I am, however, happy to volunteer. Okay, is there a second? Okay. Yes, you come. <sighs> yeah, the vote, the vote total has already been stated and so it is too late. Okay, it has been moved in, did, wait, I'm sorry. It's been moved to refer to a committee to report back next year with a made up of five members appointed by me. Was there a second? Yes. Sir, Randy, did you vote on the previous item? Is PI even considerable? I don't think it is. That's okay. Hey, it's okay. What? Hey, hey, hey. This isn't a group chat. We're checking something. Give us one moment. It is only or in order to reconsider a vote on postpone indefinitely if um, the prevailing side was in the affirmative. Okay, so the motion to refer to Seattle has been moved and seconded, or to, sorry, to a committee to report back to the Seattle business meeting, my apologies, has been moved and seconded. Um, does the member wish to speak to it? Very briefly, we have a lot of things to consider uh, at this business meeting. I do not think this is an urgent item for consideration. It can almost certainly be brought back next year. Let us consider it next year after a committee has had time to kick it about, maybe take into account some of the things that were raised during the motions to postpone indefinitely. Okay, that was a speech in favor of referral. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? Point of inquiry. Alan Fleming, he, him. How much time do we have on this debate? Uh, so debate on both postponed indefinitely and refer to committee is set at two minutes by default. So one minute on each side. Um, I'll recognize Mr. Adams in the back. Dr. Adams, sorry. Okay. Andrew Adams, he, him, which chairperson. While I'm not necessarily in favor of all the details of this motion, and I actually would like it eventually to go to committee, I think it would be very helpful if we had the sense of this meeting before we sent it to committee so we can have some extra guidance for that committee for reconsideration for possibly reintroducing it next year. So I object to referring it to committee now and would support doing so after some uh, debate later in this meeting. Okay, that was a speech against referral. Is there anyone else wishing to speak in favor? Ingvar Madsen, he, him. I think it is fairly obvious from the vote, vote totals at uh, the point of 
uh, postpone indefinitely, that uh, the meeting is almost ready to go. No, we don't want this. Okay, that was a speech in favor of referral. Is there anyone else wishing to speak against? She, her. I agree this is a terrible idea, but I think we can kill it now and don't have to form another committee. Okay. How much time is remaining? We have 23 seconds remaining for and 30 seconds remaining against. Okay. That was a speech against referral. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? I need to ask the, especially the front rows to not chatter. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor of referral? I, um, this is Ann Rudolph. I am in favor of referral because I believe that this is phrased very confusingly and I think it needs more investigation, especially because of the record keeping me involved. Um, that was a speech in favor. Is there anyone else wishing to speak against? Rick Kowalczyk, he, him. I think it's very clear uh, that this is going to be a record-keeping disaster and we should just kill this now and not refer it. That was a speech against referral. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? We have 10 seconds in favor. I move to suspend the rules and immediately call the question on the substance of this matter. Okay. It has been moved to suspend the rules and immediately vote on the substance of this matter. The motion to suspend the rules is neither debatable nor amendable. So what we are voting on is if this requires a two-thirds vote, and if it passes, we will immediately move to a vote on F.12, not on referring, not on postponing, not on anything else, just a straight up or down vote on F.12. Are we clear? Okay. Okay. You're allowed. That's fine. You don't need to apologize. Point of parliamentary inquiry. If I hear you. Sorry, I guess I need to talk with the mic. <laughs> uh, Kate Secor, she, her. If the motion to suspend the rules passes and the item is approved uh, during that time, that is the same as if we had passed it as part of our main floor debate, right? Correct. Okay. Okay. Are there any other questions? Okay. All those in favor of suspending the rules, please raise the hand. Thank you. Those against? Thank you. That was a two-thirds vote, and the motion passes. And so we are going to immediately move to a vote on F.12. After the secretary is ready. Okay. Okay. All those in favor? And I so I want to be very clear, we are voting straight up or down on F12. This is the final vote on F12, unless we get weird later. Um, all those in favor? Yes. Okay, the item before us is F.12. If we are voting whether we wish to adopt F.12. If we adopt it, it will go to Seattle for ratification, just like any other new constitutional change that we might um, adopt at this meeting. If, it, if the motion fails, it fails and it will go away, blow away in the wind. Yes. It is not in order to move to divide the question because we suspended the rules to immediately vote on F12. And so that is the item before us. Yes. The uh, vote total required to pass this would be a majority vote. So 
it's not 50% plus one, it's, that's only if it's an even number, um, but a majority vote will be required for passage. Okay, are there any other questions? Okay, seeing none, all those in favor of F.12, please raise the hand. Thank you. All those against, thank you. And the motion is defeated and F.12 um, is defeated, I just said that. Okay. We are going to move to item F.13, location, location, location. Is there anyone wishing to make a motion? Okay. Objection of the consideration was moved by Chris Rose and has been seconded. Yep. This is neither debatable nor amendable. And Object. Kevin Stanley, he, him, uh, Mr. Chairperson, I think objection to consideration does not require a second. Well, it was seconded whether it required it or not. Um, no, that's very fair. No, I did imply that, and you are correct. It does not require a second. Um, do you have a question? L Linda Robinette, uh, she, her, I am unfamiliar with the terminology. Does this objection to consideration mean we're just tab not tabling it, but getting rid of it? Yes, I was, I was gonna clarify. I was waiting for the secretary to catch up. So Chris Rose has objected co to consideration of the motion. And whether it was seconded is irrelevant. Um, this is neither debatable nor amendable and requires a three quarters vote. Should the vote pass, then the item will go away and is immediately killed. Should the vote not pass, it will still be before us. Are we clear? So the question is whether two thirds and three quarters votes are precisely two thirds and three quarters or over two thirds and three quarters. And I believe they're over. No, they are exact, you're right, they are exact, sorry. I got confused because I was just talking about majority and this whole thing, sorry, they are exact. Um, so a vote of three and two, no, I can't do math, Never mind. I'm not gonna do, I'm, 75 out of 100, there we go, would be three quarters, thank you. Wow, I swear I'm an accountant. Um, okay, so the item before us is objection to consideration of F.13. All those in favor of not considering F13, please raise the hand. Thank you. All those against? Okay, sure. All those? I take the point that was from the member and I will phrase it better, I'm sorry. All those in favor of consideration of the motion, please raise the hand. Thank you. That was not a three quarters vote and objection to consideration fails. Is there anyone else wishing to make a motion about F.13? Mixed chair in person, I move to postpone indefinitely. It has been moved and seconded to postpone indefinitely. Do you wish to speak to it? I actually do, but I really, it's more generic. P uh, the reason that I oppose uh, objection to consideration, having dealt with that in this body in the past, objection to consideration are things that are embarrassing to the body or are otherwise not appropriate for public discussion. Uh, however, postpone indefinitely, which is actually easier, is for our control of the agenda, and I think this does not belong on this year's agenda. Okay, thank you. That was a speech in favor of postponing indefinitely. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? As a reminder, debate time is set at two minutes. Person in the back. Uh, 
Nikolai Plum, he, him. If we are not to debate this here, then where are we ever to debate this? This is a motion about making sure that the World Science Fiction Convention um, operates in a place where it can in fact operate, where people are reasonably safe, reasonably free, with a simple minimum standard. And we should definitely debate this here. Thank you. Okay, that was a speech against postponing indefinitely. Is there anyone else wishing to speak in favor? John Pomeranz, he, him. Uh, I'll answer the member's question for the body. Uh, at the site selection is the answer to your question, sir. That was a speech in favor of postponing indefinitely. Is there anyone else wishing to speak against? In the back. The Josh, yeah. And while Josh is coming to the front, I will remind the body that um, please do not stand or raise the card to be recognized until after I have finished asking if there's um, anyone wishing to speak in favor or against. This is to help me help you and be fair about um, making sure that I'm being fair in picking who to speak. Joshua Cronengold, he, him. Clearly, at the ballot box doesn't work universally because it failed once. That was a speech against postponing indefinitely. Is there anyone else wishing to speak in favor? Can you bring the mic, please? It's not necessary. Fandom learns from its mistakes. The, I cite the example. I cite the example. Be in order. I cite the example of the Uganda bid, which is now the real Rwanda bid, specifically because of the question of LGBTQ. We don't need it because we already. Ten seconds. The Thank you. That was a speech in favor of postponing indefinitely, and I will remind the body to stay in order when other members are speaking. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? Uh, Kevin. Thirty-three seconds. Chairperson, um, uh, the body at whole. Uh, we need to make sure and discuss this rather than just sweep it under the rug and hope for the best in the future. Can you bring the badge to the secretary so oh, she can get your name? Yeah. Okay. Uh, that was a speech against postponing indefinitely, and time in favor elapsed, right? Okay, and there are eight seconds remaining in favor. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? I'm going to, the person in the far back. Gene Olmstead, I'm probably one of the few people here that have seen the bitter civil war. But if you decide to say to shut people out and confine them, they don't get any new ideas. Time. So. Time for speeches has elapsed. All right, that was a speech in favor. Is how much time do we have against? We have 25 seconds against. Okay. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? Terry Ash, she, her. It is clear that standards need to be enacted to preserve safety, and we as a body deserve to debate them. Okay, that was a speech against. Is there anyone else wishing to speak against? 15 seconds, 15 seconds are remaining. Okay. I think we should refer this to committee. Therefore, I vote. I would vote against uh, whatever we're doing. Okay, that was a speech against. I believe we have like maybe five seconds. Let's go up. Eleven seconds. Is there anyone else wishing to speak against? Okay, seeing none, we'll move 
you are wishing to speak against? Okay, you have 11 seconds. Ann Rudolph. This is a really simple uh, way to make sure that we do not end up in an authoritarian country again where we will not have control over our administrative processes. Time. That, mm, I'm going to remind the body, I'm going to remind the body that they, when we are talking about, when debate is entering into discussions of things that may or may not have happened to keep your debate quite narrow in order to remain in order and not make allegations or insinuations which would be out of order and improper. Okay, time uh, in, on both sides has elapsed and so we will move to a vote. The item before us is postponing indefinitely F.13, requires a two-thirds vote. All those in favor of postponing indefinitely, please raise the hand. Thank you. Those against? Thank you. That is not a two-thirds vote and the motion does not pass. Is there anyone else wishing to make a motion on F.13? John Pomeranz, he, him. I move that this matter be referred to a committee um, specific to this particular motion rather than one that already exists, uh, appointed by the chair. Do you have any feelings on like numbers of members or anything? You don't have I do to. Not. Okay. I do not. I leave it to the discretion of the chair. Report back at the next business meeting, please. Okay. Sorry, clear. Next year's business meeting. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it, all right, there is a second. It has been moved and seconded. I'm going to ask members who are having conversations to do so quiet enough that I can't hear them. Um, it has been moved and seconded to refer to a committee um, that I would appoint uh, F.13 to report back to next year's business meeting. Debate time is automatically set at two minutes. Do you wish to speak to it? It, it won't surprise anybody. I, I voted to postpone indefinitely. I appreciate the sentiment that underlies this and I am concerned about uh, uh, the possibility of Worldcon being held in places that I would find objectionable. I am concerned that I should not be, nor should other people be, the ones to find things objectionable. And we need to figure out how to do that before we willy-nilly pass on first past a constitutional amendment to this effect. I urge us to give this some more thought, and a committee is the right way to do that at this point. Please pass this. That was a speech in favor of referral to committee. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? Mr. Adam, or Dr. Adams. Andrew Adams, he, him. We keep referring to things to committee without getting a sense of people in this meeting. I realize we have a very long agenda this year, but I really think we need some debate on these issues before we punt them to committee. We have a serious set of situations which generated this really long agenda, and we keep throwing things to committee without even getting the sense of the people in this room who are going to be the same ones mostly debating whatever comes out of those committees. Let's get some sense of this committee, uh, this meeting's feelings about these things and then punt them to committee, please. That was the speech against referral to committee. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? In the purple. Yeah, it's Tammy. I'm trying to do better about not calling some people by name and some people not. Tammy Coxon, she, her. Um, I believe we should be uh, putting some constraints in place about who is allowed to bid. I don't think this proposal is the best way to do that. I think it would be good to explore more ideas um, and come back to the, uh, the business meeting with a suggestion and a committee would be positioned to do that. Uh, to the prior speaker, um, Ten seconds. Point, um, we don't have time. We're not going to get to this agenda item if we uh, try to do it in this meeting. I hear you that knowing the sense of the meeting would be good, but we, we're not going to get there. Time. Okay. That was a speech in favor of referral, and time in favor has now elapsed. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? Uh, 
my plum, he, him. Sorry. Uh, this is a well-constructed motion with a narrow, low set of criteria that any even vaguely reasonable country or location ought to meet. It is not necessary to punt this to a committee in order to further refine it. We can simply vote on it as it is. Thank you. That was a speech against referral. How much time is remaining against? 15 seconds. Okay. Is there anyone else wishing to speak against? Jerry Lohr, he, him. Uh, next chairperson, the, the list of referrals is very, referrers Ten is seconds. very long. I think we have already had a committee working on this, and we won't do any better by referring it to another one. Okay. Time ha for speeches on both sides has elapsed, and so we will move to a vote. The item before us is referral of F.13 to a committee to be appointed by me. Is there any, er, sorry, are we clear? Okay, all those in favor of referral, please raise the hand. Thank you. Those against, I believe the motion passes. Okay, and the motion is referred to committee. Okay, you, you're calling for division? Okay, so we're gonna do another standing counted vote. Are we all clear on the process for this? Okay, all those in favor of referral to committee, please stand or raise the card. No. Is there anybody else wishing to vote in favor that was not counted? Okay. All those against referral, please stand. Is there anybody else wishing to vote against that was not counted? Okay, by a vote of 43 to 33, the motion is referred to committee. We are at time for our break. I, I will deal with figuring this committee out when we get back, but we are going to be in recess until 11:21.
This is your one minute warning, one minute. Okay, we're back in order. Please take your seats and cease conversations. Please take your seats and, see, and cease conversations. Okay, here's the deal, y'all. The intention of this is to move quickly, well, quicker. Um, and we have not been moving at the pace that we did yesterday. So, um, discussing with the head table, our sense is that part of what is taking time is the creation of new committees. So, I'm going to ask unanimous consent of the body that we say referral to committee will still be in order but only existing committees on the first pass okay uh, and yeah, I'm gonna object to that. okay okay that's been objected to so then i'm gonna ask the sense of the body um I feel at this point that we are not saving time on the first pass and we need to move into ratifications and then substantive debate on new changes. I'm not seeing anyone jumping up and down and saying don't do that. So that's what we're going to do. Yes. I don't remember what it was, but sure. Is this on? Yeah. Harry Ann Lurie, she, her. I would like to move that the body request that, that the chairperson appoint at least one person from a potentially affected country to the newly created committee. Okay. Is there any objection to the body uh, directing me to appoint at least one person from a potentially affected country to the F.13 committee? It would be my discretion to determine what a potentially affected country would be. Is that? Well, yes, it would. They would need to consent to it. Well, first, I need to handle the thing that I'm currently in the middle of. So, is there any objection to the body directing me to? A point with consent somebody from an affected country to the F13 committee with me determining what counts as an affected committee. You is there an objection? Okay. So was there a second for the member's motion? Okay, I'm going to set debate time on this to 0 minutes. Is there any objection to 0 minutes? Hearing none, debate time is set at zero minutes. All those in favor of directing me to appoint a person to the F13 committee from an affected country with consent and me determining what counts as an affected country, please raise the hand. Thank you. Those against, thank you. And the motion passes. Okay, uh, and Mr. Stanley, no, I don't need a motion. I'm taking the objection in the sense of the body that we're gonna be moving into ratification so we can deal with those and then deal with constitutional changes and we are done with the first-ish pass. Yes. Uh, 
parliamentary inquiry, are PI and objective considerations still in order given that we're abandoning the first pass? So per the standing rule change that we created, um, it is in order to postpone and enact it immediately. The first time something comes up at a main business meeting, it is in order to postpone it indefinitely. And I believe our rules don't actually constrain when we can object to consideration. Does it? Well, yeah, it's constrained by Robert's rules that you have to do it first. But I don't believe we have constraints on when, what kind of meeting that can occur at. So yes, that would also be in order the first time an item comes up. Okay. So we are going to move to a ratification of new constitutional changes or constitutional changes passed on rather. Yes. I will ask the secretary to stay in order. Yeah. <laughs> Mixed chair, Cliff Dunn, he, him. I move to amend the agenda and handle all of the, the newly proposed amendments, that is, I believe, Foxtrot, prior to the business passed on Echo. Okay, so the Echo and Foxtrot was referring to E and F, meaning the sections of the agenda. That's what that was, because I think there was some confusion there. So it has been moved to uh, amend the agenda to uh, take up all of the business passed on after the new constitutional changes. I'm going to rule that out of order because the ratifications are special orders per Robert's rules that states that when our bylaws require us to take up motions at a certain meeting, which the next business meeting would be one, they are special orders. Point of enforcement. Yes. If we ha ratifications and, biz and business passed on are the same thing. The, I, I'm gonna, I, I'm unclear on what the member is asking, but I will say that the standard way that business meetings generally handle things is that we have the final vote on business passed on before we have the final votes on new constitutional changes. And so it doesn't break anything because that's sort of the sensible way of doing it. Yes. One moment. Right. Um, so the question is whether or not a motion to suspend the rules would be in order to do the thing that I said was out of order. It is my determination that um, because, so the ratifications being special orders is not something that protects the rights of absentees because they there is no determined time that they will come up at, and therefore it would be in order to suspend the rules to do so. Are you wishing to make such a motion? Okay. It has been moved and seconded to suspend the rules and to move the um, all of the ratifications of business passed on the E section of the agenda until after we have finished consideration of the new constitutional changes, the F section of the agenda. The motion to suspend the rules is neither debatable nor amendable and requires a two-thirds vote. The motion to reorder the agenda requires a two-thirds vote, but is amendable and is, I believe, also debatable. So we will not be doing this as one vote since the requirements for them are different. We will only be voting on the suspension of the rules. Okay, are we clear on what we're voting on? Okay. All those in favor of suspending the rules to allow us to take up the change to the agenda, please raise the hands. Thank you, all those against. That was not a two-thirds vote and the motion does not pass. So the item before us is E.1, Mark's authorization found on page 22 of the agenda. I'm going to suggest a debate time of, spreadsheet, where are you? Four minutes for this. Is there any objection to four minutes? Hearing none, debate time is set at four minutes. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? Uh, 
Donnelly's like he, him. Uh, this is a fairly simple provision to take what is the, the implication and traditions as to the use of marks and put it down in writing. I think people want this stuff to be more formal. There are other upcoming uh, constitutional amendments which require a license agreement, and I think many people support that, which would be more rigorous, but this at least gets something in writing into the Constitution about what the authorization is for uh, selected committees to use WISFIS marks. That was a speech in favor. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? Mixed chairperson, uh, my name is Kent Bloom, and uh, I think this is unnecessary and redundant. The fact that, 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 that we select world cons uh, authorizes them by tradition and, all, a, and essentially by implication uh, to use the marks. Uh, we never co object the, to them using the marks if they use them in a reasonable way. And therefore, uh, it just adds additional verbiage in the Constitution, which can be confusing. Okay, that was a speech against. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? Next Chair, Kevin Stanley, he, him. Um, in fact, people have been objecting to what we have. Not everybody is aware that this is happening, but there have been vociferous objections claiming that m committees are using things without authorization because it's not in writing. In addition, I would note that the second part of the amendment is basically to generalize the language to handle all conventions that WSFIS uh, manages in any way. Uh, that's merely an editorial issue in my opinion. But in any event, there are people out there complaining they may not be the people you know. They're probably not any of the people in this room. But it has been happening. Point of privilege. We need to switch the. You don't like my face? Oh, Discord. Come on. Um, OK, cool. Uh, tech says they've done it. Okay, that was a speech in favor. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? I do need to recognize you to do that, but you were the only person standing. So the motion, uh, the question has been called. Is there anyone still wishing to speak? Seeing none, we will move to a vote on, we don't need to vote on calling the question if there's nobody wishing to speak. So we're moving to a vote on E.1. All those in favor of ratifying E.1, please raise the hand. Thank you. All those opposed? And the motion passes. We are now going to take up item E.2, business meeting contingencies, also on page 22. I'm suggesting a debate time of four minutes. Is there any objection to four minutes? Hearing none, debate time is set at four minutes. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? Donald East, like him. And don't worry, I won't speak to everything. Um, <laughs> both E1 and E2 came from the Mark Protection Committee last year. Uh, anyway, E2 is basically just to prov provide uh, what can be done in case uh, a Worldcon can't be held or there can't, isn't a business meeting or isn't a, cor a quarate business meeting that can really conduct business. Uh, there have been years during World War II when there were no Worldcons. There have been uh, several Worldcons overseas in which it's been very hard to. Uh, scrape together people to hold a, a, a business meeting validly, and this just has obvious provisions where, in, in that case, things just sort of get f carried on to the next year. That was, a speech. that was a speech in favor. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? Mixed, cha mixed chairperson, my name is Kent Bloom, and once again, uh, in the interest of trying to keep the Constitution as short, simple, and straightforward as possible, and in the interest of not specifying in great detail procedures that are mostly not going to be handled, uh, this having recently, as as recently as as Con Zealand, been it been it been, been, been occurred and been handled properly uh, without this information, without this uh, verbiage, uh, I don't think we should continue to add to the Constitution this way. OK, 
Okay, that was the speech against. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? Andrew Adams, he, him, which chairperson, as a very senior member of the Conzealand Committee, I would disagree with the uh, previous member's statement that it was not needed. There were very significant situations and we faced precisely the problems here. We managed to avoid them occurring, but that was by the skin of our teeth. That was a speech in favor. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? The previous question has been called and seconded. Is there anyone still wishing to speak? Seeing none, we will move to a vote. This is a vote on E.2. All those in favor of E.2, please raise the hand. Thank you. Those against, and the motion passes. The next item before us is E.3, consistent change. I'm going to recommend a debate time of four minutes for this. Is there any objection to four minutes? Hearing none, debate time is set at four minutes. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? Is there anyone wishing to speak against? Seeing none, we will move to a vote. All those in favor of E.3, consistent change, please raise the hand. Thank you. Those against? And the motion passes. Okay, give me a second to catch up. Yep. We're going to give the secretary a moment. Our next item will be E.4, convention time bracket on page 24. Ready? Yeah. Okay. So item before us is E.4, convention time bracket. I'm going to recommend a debate time of two minutes. Is there any objection to two minutes? Hearing none, debate time is set at two minutes. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? Yes. Andrew Adams, he, him. Would an amendment to this which moved the date, the earliest date earlier, be regarded as a lesser change or would it require re-ratification? Since the current state of the Constitution is, oh, no, we were speaking the mic. I don't need to restate it. Never mind. Okay. Uh, since the current state of the Constitution is no restriction on dates, my ruling would be that an amendment expanding the date window would be a lesser change as it does not deviate more from the Constitution than the current change is. So yes, it would be a lesser change. Uh, point of information, Perry and Lurie Sheher. Could someone please tell the body what is specified in 2.6? Yeah, sure. Let me pull it up. 2.6. Got to get past the threes. 2.6, incapacity of committees. This is the, with sites being selected two years in advance, there are always two selected current or future Worldcon committees. If one of them is unable to perform its duties, the other selected or current, current future Worldcon committee shall determine what action to take. And then it talks about a business meeting or a meal pull of WISFIS and such. So this is, it's the incapacity of committees section. Is that enough information? Okay. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor of E.4? Okay. Is there, you, there is no amendment on the floor. There's just a question about the possibility of one. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor of E.4? I will remind the body that the question wasn't about lesser changes, but, or sorry, the question was about lesser changes and not other things, but 
because it wasn't provided in the agenda, an amendment to a ratification does require a two-thirds vote of the body to um, adopt or permit to consider. to consider and then majority to adopt. Andrew Adams, he, him. Mr. Chairperson, I move to amend this to uh, substitute 1st of June rather than 20th of June. I think this is just a little too restrictive. It's been moved and seconded to strike 20 June and replace with 1st of June. And it has been seconded. So as I stated, this will require a two-thirds vote on behalf. It will require a two-thirds vote in order to even consider it. So we will take that vote first. All those in favor of considering this motion, please raise the hand. Thank you. All those against? The motion passes and we can consider it. I did hear a second. So the item before us is an amendment to E.4 to strike 20 June and replace with 1st June. I will rule this, do I rule it before or after? I'll do it now. I'm gonna rule this a lesser change. Is there, um, debate time is automatically set to five minutes except that we don't have that much. So it's going to be the total of 145 or whatever we have left 151. 151 so half and half for that is there anyone wishing to speak in favor of the amendment that is not in order does the member wish to move to suspend the rules and call the question okay is it is it on all that is before us or just the amendment Okay, if it's on just the amendment, is there anyone wishing to speak on the amendment? Okay, then. Okay, yes, and there was somebody else I saw. Okay. Um, so it is general. So I'm going to say because you were only moving to do it on the amendment, I'm going to rule that it would not save us time to actually take the vote on calling the question on just the amendment, and we're just going to handle the debate. So. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor of the amendment? Is there anyone wishing to speak against the amendment? Ann Rudolph. Um, I know that uh, these dates were considered uh, with regard to the Hugo nominations and balloting and notification process and um, doing that in less than six months is pretty fast. I don't think cutting it by the three weeks would be a positive act. That was the speech against. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor of the amendment? Is there anyone else wishing to speak against? We are, the item before us is the amendment to E.4 to strike 20 June and insert 1st of June. And we are on a speech against said amendment. Six, Rick Kowalczyk, he, him, six months is a nice round amount of time. Having different numbers in different places is confusing to people. Also, there has been much grief and much uh, complaints in the past about co uh, conflicts with schools. Many schools do not get out until later in June. Uh, in the Northern Hemisphere, and I think this is a bad idea. Okay, that was a speech against the amendment. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? Kate Secor, she, her. Since the current constitutional doesn't require anything, you could have your convention in February if that's what you decided you wanted to do. I am not necessarily convinced that expanding their available <coughs> range of choices, like that's their choice to make. If they say we want to do the convention during school, that's their choice to make. I'm not sure it's our job to make that choice for them. Okay. That was a speech in favor of the amendment. How much time is remaining against? 15 seconds. Yes, that was a speech in favor. There are 15 seconds remaining against. Is there anyone wishing to speak against the amendment?
Mixed Chair, Cliff Dunn, he, him. I would just like to point out the fact that the number of uncontested years means that in a lot of cases, we're getting whatever the committee brings down and telling people to bid if they don't like when the dates are is not really a reasonable demand of people. Been there, done that, got the t-shirt. Okay. Two seconds. Okay, so time against the amendment has fully elapsed. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? Thirty-four. Thirty-four seconds remain in favor. A lot of when to conventions are held depends on the price rates we can get for hotels. If the price of your room is a hundred versus hundred and fifty, do you want your convention the month that it's in a hundred or hundred and fifty? Therefore we leave people free to choose. I'm unclear if that was debate on the amendment or the underlying motion, but sorry, I can't Yeah, but it's done. Okay. Is there any time remaining in favor? Sixteen seconds. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? Seeing none, we will move to a vote. All those in favor of the amendment to strike 20 June and insert 1st June, please raise the hand. Thank you. Those against? Okay, I'm going to ask, put your hands down. I'm going to do another hand vote before I decide we need to do a serpentine. Those in favor, please raise the hand. Thank you. Those against? Okay, I'm going to say the motion fails. Okay, and so the amendment fails, and what is before us is E.4, no longer not amended as it was originally presented. Um, time has elapsed, however, we had, we, yes? Uh, we don't need to suspend the rules because we have not had substantive debate on the underlying motion. And so the, uh, our standing rules say that they, there shall automatically be two minutes for each side. I'm going to, um, if there are no objections, I'm going to say one minute for each side since we originally set it at two total minutes. Hearing no objection, there is one minute of time allotted for each side. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor of E.4? Kevin Stanley, he, him, mixed chair. Sadly, we have actually seen at least hypothetical cases where world cons were obliged to postpone their events from their originally scheduled dates by substantial amounts in some cases. And the question came up, what if they had planned their convention for August or September and find themselves so constrained that they can't hold their convention until the following February? Is that illegal? It isn't clear. But it certainly would have collided with a bunch of other pro issues that the other Worldcon after them would have. Those of us proposing this, I believe, think uh, that this is, we need to set a little bit of bumpers on this. Okay. That was a speech in favor. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? While I understand this may be intended to address postponements, as written, it does not do that. If I bid a convention to be held in October of the year, I could not consult with my successor about that uh, time period being after September 30th because my successor would not exist at the time my bid was selected. Okay. That was a speech against. Is there anyone else wishing to speak in favor? Seeing none, is there anyone else wishing to speak against? Perry Ann Lurie, she, her. This does not allow for force majeure problems. Instead, you would have to bump the world con to a different committee when that might not be necessary. If, if this con had had to have their convention on December 23rd, that would not have been allowable. Okay, that was a speech against. Is there anyone else wishing to speak in favor? How much time is remaining? 
We have 14 seconds in favor. 14 seconds remains in favor. Swift done, he, him. Unless some deviation is authorized under section 2.6, they would have just had to ask Chicago for permission, which I think is a reasonable burden to put on them. Okay, that was the speech in favor. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? How much time remains in favor? Uh, in favor, seven seconds. I'm gonna consider that to be time elapsed unless there's an objection. Okay, time in favor has elapsed and I don't, there was nobody wishing to speak against, so we will move to a vote. So this is on the ratification of E.4. All those in favor, please raise the hand. Okay, thank you. All those against? Okay, and the motion passes and E.4 is adopted. Okay, it's 11.52, our break is not until 12.15, so we are going to move on to E.5, Bid Committee Contactability, found on page 24 of your agenda. I am suggesting a debate time of four minutes for this. Is there any objection to four minutes? Hearing none, debate time is set at four minutes. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? Is there anyone wishing to speak against? Seeing none, we will move to a vote. All those in favor of ratification of E.5 bid committee contactability, please raise the hand. Thank you, those against, and the motion passes. Since we've only used one minute, we're gonna keep moving. Wait, E.6, ballot completeness is found on page 25. I'm going to recommend a debate time of six minutes for this. Is there any objection to six minutes? Hearing none, debate time is set at six minutes. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor of the motion? Good. Uh, Don Lee Slake, he, him. Uh, this uh, adds us the option of putting a postal, uh, a uh, email, uh, sorry, a phone number space on the ballot, which I wasn't provided for before, but wasn't prohibited. This is a suggestion, a couple words there, and just simply puts in writing what has always been the expectation that the uh, address uh, to be given on the ballot is the postal address. That was a speech in favor. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? Rick Kowalczyk, he, him. I think we're getting into risk of unintended consequences. You're potentially disenfranchising uh, uh, future people, people who may actually be homeless, and this is trying to deal with a problem that perhaps was not a problem. I will remind the body to please stay in order. That was a speech against. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? John Pomerantz, he, him. Uh, I appreciate the member's point. I was very concerned upon first reading that unhoused people might be excluded by this. I'm satisfied that the benefits to be gained by this are greater than that potential loss, particularly given that they will have their votes counted as no preference and therefore get the benefit of the subsequent WISFIS membership. That was a speech in favor. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? Kate C. Cor, she, her. Please define for me every possible format of postal address that you might accept and whether or not you feel confident in your ability to validate whether that is a valid postal address. Okay, that was a speech against. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? It is, no, people can use what mic they want. Linda Robinette, she, her. I have worked with the Register of Voters in the past, and there are many, many ways of being able to have a proper address where you can vote in your proper precinct. This is the way we run it in California. 
and vote and be homeless. So I don't feel that the um, lack of a permanent address is necessarily uh, uh, disregarding homeless people. Okay. That was a speech in favor. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? It's the person next to you, Perry, I'm sorry. Dave Hook, he, him. Um, the one thing I've observed in the United States is that there are substantial numbers of not homeless, but people on reservations where they actually do not have postal addresses. And they do vote, but it is really, in many areas, it's very problematic about the fact that there is no postal address. And so when I see this on this thing, even though I understand what's being proposed, I am worried about that. Yeah, can you please bring your badge to the secretary? One moment. Uh, we have 153 remaining for and 213 remaining against. Okay, that was a speech in favor, right? It was against, sorry. Thank you. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? Joni Brill Dashoff. I administered two site selections, and it is very hard to do the pre certification without a postal address to confirm that it is a human who voted. Since the reservations have ways to get you to vote in the United States elections, whatever procedure they use, we can also adopt. But truly, you've been asked by the computers lots of times to prove you're a human. I strongly recommend we specify both postal and electronic. I know it's cheaper to contact by electronic, but first, please, can I have a postal address so I know you're real? Are we wanting to make privileged motions? Okay, then it's not time to raise your hand yet. That was a speech in favor. Is there anyone wishing to speech ag speak against? Uh, sorry, pink mask. Is, are you wanting to make a privileged motion? Okay. Um, Ray Richards, he, him. Uh, with respect to the previous speaker, I think we're falling a little into American exceptionalism. And I would like to restate uh, Kate Secor's point. There are a vast number of countries in this world with a vast number of systems of postal addresses or ways of recording where you live and to be honest, I doubt there is any site selector administrator out there who could look at a ballot from somewhere in the world and go, yes, this is a valid postal address or not. That was a speech against. Are you wishing to make a privileged motion? Okay. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? I'm, are you? Okay, then I will recognize you. Sorry. Once he started bouncing, I could tell. Uh, Lisa Hayes, she, her. I want to make it clear that if you're on the bid or trying to run a Worldcon, it's a legal entity. You have to be able to be sued. So you have to have an address to sue from. Now, it can be a lawyer's address. It can be your friend's address. It can be anything. But something has to be there. Uh, yeah. I'm going to remind the body that there's only one presiding officer in the room and that it is not your job to enforce debate and that when a member is wrapping up their speech and walking away from the microphone, it does not save us time to yell at them about whether or not it was the correct kind of debate to have. So I will, however, rule that that was not a speech about this motion. And so I believe I had asked for a speech in favor, right? Okay, is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? Okay, in the Hawaiian mask, tie-dye mask, fun colors mask. Alexis Layton, he, him. Nothing in this text requires validation. Merely that the address is not omitted. Okay, that was a speech in favor. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? Yeah, you, sorry. 
Chris Hensley, he, him. The fact is that postal addresses are not actually a useful way for validating that someone is a valid human being. My first job was in working with computers was scraping public databases of addresses. Those things can be bought cheaply and they are valid addresses. And so even if we had the capability to validate the legitimacy of the address, that does not mean that there is a real person there. It is not, it is not sufficient for the purpose that d they claim it is being used for. Thank you. As a speech against, how are we doing on time? We have 59 seconds remaining for and a minute 10 seconds remaining against. Thank you. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? The people speaking against this motion have made some very valid points. I will try quickly to address some of them. You are correct. It is possible to fictitiously post an address that you found somewhere else. Having an address makes it easier for someone who cares to and has the access to that information to follow up and say, did you actually vote? It is also true that postal addresses in different cultures are wildly variable and that One no- One moment, I'm gonna interrupt the speaker, I'm sorry. You already spoke on this item, didn't you? I did, ma'am. You did, I shouldn't, mm -hmm. sorry, mixed I shouldn't have recognized you and my apologies. Okay, S is there anyone else wishing to speak in favor? Kevin, Stan Kevin Stanley, he, him. Next chair, during World War II and sometime thereafter, there were, I believe, thousands, if not multiple hundreds of people, all with the same address. It was a post office box in Albuquerque. That was a postal address. Postal address does not say physical address. All of those people were at Los Alamos National Laboratories. They were not Ten allowed seconds. to have an address but they could all have postal addresses. And the Sears Roebuck Company were wondering why were they sending so many catalogs to Albuquerque? <laughs> Time. Okay. Time in favor um, has elapsed. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? D have you already spoken on this one? Uh, okay, cool. I didn't think you had. Andrew Adams, he, him. I move to divide the question between what was represented by the maker as the um, editorial motion to add may include telephone address and the rest of the question so that we may um, consider these two elements which I believe are distinct um, distinctly. One moment. Can you restate how you're dividing it? Because I didn't quite catch all of it. Just one second. Um, I wish to divide it. First question should be to add and may include a telephone number space and the rest of the amendments yeah. to be a separate question. Okay. Um, so it's my ruling that this would be allowed because either of these changes on their own would be a lesser change. Um, is there a second? Okay, it has been seconded. So the item before it has been moved and seconded to divide the question to let me restate the motion first. It has been moved and seconded to divide the question so that the first portion is the addition of and may include a telephone number a telephone number space. And then the second question would be the other changes contained in E.6. What is your question? Would it be in order to suggest a different division? Yes, the motion to, well, it would be in order to amend. The motion to divide is amendable. That would be in order. Okay. Yes. Cliff Dunn, he, him. Uh, if, if we were to divide this and uh, the result would be that we only passed one, would that not count as an amendment in the second year? and thus need two thirds? It, I, I mean, 
I'm going to say it's going to take a two-thirds vote to divide the question because it's essentially functioning as an amendment. Because that seems reasonable. Okay. Ron has a question. I'm recognized, Ron. Inquiry to the proposer. Uh, the are you planning? There are additions highlighted in blue prior to the text you are asking to be included in the first part. Are you intending those to be included in the first part of the divided question or the second part? Uh, it involves email address and telephone number. That's a question for the chair and sorry apologies mixed chair uh, as I stated it and the member didn't tell me that I was wrong the first question would be solely the addition of and may include a telephone number space and the second question would be all other changes in e.6 both those in the first sentence before telephones and those after uh, parliamentary inquiry yes um, so this is basically splitting the ratification in two and we can ratify one vote or neither and if they're both ratified they will be recombined at the discretion of the secretary in probably this exact form. Correct. correct? Yes. I would highly recommend the secretary recombine it in this exact form. Correct. Um, were there any other questions? I know this is weird. Yes. Yes, Elsa. Can, yeah, okay, you're good. No, there's, you are, you're looking at E.5, not E.6. We are on E.6. Okay. I believe so, yes. That looks correct, and I believe we have, so n we now have the division up on a slide. Okay. So this is going to be a motion, this is uh, gonna require a two-thirds vote. All those in favor of division, are you wishing to make a motion? Okay. I wish to propose a different division of the, uh, so that's a second order amendment or whatever, right? Okay, so no, this is, it's not a second order amendment because it's, it's a division, not an amendment. What, of, what other division are you proposing? Uh, instead of the one that is there, I would propose to include in the top part the uh, postal and email address, and just the bottom part is the ballots omitting the name, signature, postal address. Okay, so the alternate division being proposed would be that the first question would be the addition of postal address, email address, and may include a telephone number space. And the second question would be the addition of the sentence that begins ballot omitting name, et cetera. Is there a second? second. Okay. It, yes. I, you need to come to a mic, I cannot hear you. Apologies, Mixed Chairperson. I believe that the proposed second division is intertwined that it is making reference to postal address that would not be added if postal address is added by the first one. I'll take that point. Yes, that point of order is well taken. Yes, such a division would be entangled and would not be in order. Thank you. Okay, so the amendment to the division was ruled out of order and so we are back to the original division is there one moment? Are you wishing to debate or to amend or to something else? Okay, please come forward and state your amendment. The question to divide is not debatable. That's why I asked. Joshua Cronengold, he, him. Um, I move to suspend the rules. 
um, and uh, divide the question in nearly the same manner as the previous speaker, except that um, uh, uh, that postal address is duplicated across both um, divisions. So th that that is not we can't suspend the rule. The rule preventing you from dividing a question that is entangled is one of sense making and not dividing a question in such a way that you could pass one part and like it and that then it wouldn't make sense. So I'm going to rule that that can't be suspended because that would be entirely unfair to the secretarial team and to the body and to the society. So that cannot be suspended. Okay, you've appealed the ruling of the chair. I am going to rule that this is a decision that is unappealable as it is something that there cannot be two reasonable opinions about. It is not possible to divide a question in a way where one part of the question is dependent upon, a, on, upon the second part of a question that is that leads to nonsense and that, therefore that decision is not appealable. You cannot, you, you cannot chain appeals that way. I have ruled that it is not appealable. Do you wish? I, I understand that you believe that the chair is incorrect about the facts of the matter and the chair has said that you are not. Do you wish to vote to remove the chair? Okay, so we are currently on the question of the division. Is there anyone, do you have an amendment? was trying to do was separate out the, you have to vote it as no preference from the what goes on the ballot part. Right. So I'm not sure how to do that. Okay, I understand what you are trying to do. However, what is before us is E.6 as passed at Chengdu. We are not, our, our system is that we ratify changes that were passed at the previous convention and that we can, or not, and that there are certain kinds of changes that we can make to those. If you wish to make a substantive amendment that would be a greater change, then we can do that, and then it would be passed on for ratification at Seattle, and this would count as its first, as its first passage. But just because we want to be able to do a thing to a ratification does not mean it is possible to do that thing. I guess my question, this is Perry and Laurie Sheher, I guess my question is, would it be in order to strike out the ballot containing name, signature, or postal address may only be counted as no preference, which would be a lesser change, correct? Yeah, it would be in order to amend to strike that sentence, correct. The, the problem with division was that you right. were not striking, it would be possible to adopt that and not the other part. So is it in order to make the motion to strike that now? not while we're on the division. Okay. okay. <laughs> okay. The parliamentarian will work on fixing that. Yes. Can you please come to the mic? Oh, we okay? Okay, um, under my proposed division, um, you would have two, um, uh, 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 two amendments that were both complete and on themselves. One of them would add postal address and, um, um, and um, then create the dependent clause of ballots submitting name, signature, and postal address may only be counted as no preference. Um, one would also add postal address and add a bunch of other stuff. How is that creating a, a headache for the chair and making um, and creating um, an unentangleable <laughs> thing? Yeah. 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 I don't understand the chair's ruling. I. It's a point of order. Yeah, it's a point of order because I've already ruled on this. I'm going to just. Okay. This is going to be the last thing I say about this. Under such a division, you could have a sentence saying that if you omit the postal address, the, 
ballot will only be considered no preference, but we may not have passed the change requiring that there be a space for the postal address. And it is not sensical to say that we can do, that if a ballot doesn't include certain things, it's no preference if we have not instructed that the ballot be required to include those things. Okay, the question before us is the division. For what purpose does the member rise? Okay, the question has been called on the division. Is there anybody else wishing to speak? Seeing none, we will move to a vote. The item before us is the division of E.6 into two questions. The first question would be the addition of and may include a telephone number space. The second question would be all other changes to E.6 that are, yeah, all other changes within E.6, both the postal address and email address section and the ballots omitting sentence. Are we clear on th what is before us? Okay, all those in favor of the division, please raise the hand. Thank you, all those against, thank you. The division fails. We are going to take our lunch break and come back and take up, well, let me, let me ask this first. Is there anybody still wishing to speak on E.6? Yes, we are going to go to the lunch break and when we come back, we will take up E.6. We will be back here at 1 p.m. I will ask, sorry, I meant to say this before dismissing. Uh, we're going to try to do some ballot counting um, during the lunch break. If there's one or two people who are interested in helping out, please come up.
Yellow mic check, one, two, one, two.
Okay, I'm going to say, we're gonna, I'm just letting you all know, we're going to reconvene in hopefully four minutes at 105. My understanding is they're almost done counting the MPC votes. I will say, depending on investigation votes, um, because of the number of options and seats, um, is, was not possible to be completed during lunch. Uh, if there is one or two volunteers who'd be interested in helping out Sharon, um, please come to the front. And if not, we understand. The volunteers can't be nominees for the Committee on Investigation, to be clear. Kate, we have an and or or question. Okay, I'm gonna call us back into order um, and hopefully I will have a deputy presiding officer and results of the MPC election fairly soon. Um, okay, previously on the business meeting, for those that don't remember, um, we were on E.6. Also, because my brain isn't next to me right now, don't let me forget after we handle E.6, I need to say some things about committees. Um, so we were on E.6, there was a motion to divide which failed, and so we are back to E.6 as originally, as printed in the agenda. We have not had substantive debate on, or no, the division was like at the, at the end of quite a bit of substantive debate actually, so never mind. Uh, we've had, we have had substantive debate, 
and all time for debate has elapsed. Um, I believe there is a person wishing to make an amendment, and so I will recognize Kate. Hi. Oh, there we go. Sorry, I just wasn't close enough. Kate Secor, she, her, mixed chair. I move to amend the proposal by removing the words or postal address and changing the comma between name and signature to the word or. Did you want to also add the word either before name? Uh, sure, if that's clearer for people. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Okay. The amendment is to change the sentence that says, Ballot submitting name, signature, or postal address may only be counted as no preference to read ballot submitting either name or signature may only be counted as no preference. Are we clear on what the amendment is? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. This is, are we, okay, I think we're clear. Okay, this is not debatable because time for debate has expired. Is there anyone needing to make a privileged motion? A oh, right, a two-thirds vote. You're right, sorry. Does it, should it happen before or after we take the two thirds vote to consider it? You're gonna ask me if it's a lesser change? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, so Kevin Stanley has asked me if it's a lesser change. So. Or yes, a not greater change. Yeah, okay, so. It's, it's not further away from the text of the yeah. statute. Okay, my ruling is that this is not a greater change because it does not bring us further away from the Constitution than the original amendment does, or the original E.6 does. Okay, um, because this is a uh, amendment to a new constitutional change up for ratification that was not submitted ahead of time, it does require a two-thirds vote for the body to decide to consider it. All those in, fav in favor of considering this amendment, this is not a vote on whether you want to pass the amendment, merely whether you want to consider it. All those in favor of considering the amendment, please raise the hand. Thank you. All those against, that was not two thirds in favor and so the amendment is not going to be considered. We are back to E.6 as in the agenda. Time for debate has expired. Okay, so we are going to move to a vote. Okay. Okay, is there anyone wishing to do anything? Seeing none, we're gonna move to a vote and we don't need to call the question. So all those in favor of E.6, please raise the hand. Thank you, all those against? And the motion passes and E.6 is adopted. Um, yes? Oh. Okay, because it had been working. Um, okay, we're going to take a brief standing pause. Okay, is the body okay with me giving the instructions on indicating interest in committee without captioning? I'm aware it's iron ironic to ask that. Okay, I'm gonna state this now and then I'll restate it later with we, when we have captioning, how about that? Okay, so anyone interested in the F.13 committee, that's the location committee, um, I've had a few folks express interest, uh, please, um, get a piece of paper, put your name and your email address on it and put the word F.13 on it um, and come and give it to me at a break. Don't feel the need to chat with me, just give me the piece of paper. Um, for the other committees that we've created like the Hugo Process Study Committee and the Business Meeting Committee, please email uh, businessmeeting at glasgow2024.org and we will get your interest passed along to the chairs of those committees. 
The address is business meeting with or without a hyphen at glasgow2024.org. Yes. Where might you find some spare paper? Uh, Perry Ann has some apparently, and the hotel has some. And we, we have paper up here. If you need the paper, you can come up here at the break and grab the paper to then fill it out. If you did not get the email address verbally, the slide I, the ignore the rest of the slide, but the slide I have has the email address on it. So Ron, what is the situation with the captioning? Okay. Given that we don't have a timeline from them, we are going to go ahead and move forward without captioning. Please, I'm gonna ask the body, since we do not have the captioning, to please make sure to speak clearly and do not speak too quickly when you speak so that members who have difficulties hearing or processing are able to follow. And hopefully we will have the captioning again soon. Do we have a result for the Mark Protection Committee elections? We do have a result. The first seat went to Donald Eastlake, the second to Linda Dinneroff, and the third to Olav Rockney. Okay, so to be clear, if you're interested in being on the F.13 committee, bring that up to the head table at a break, not while we're in session. Okay. Is there an objection to thanking the tellers and ordering them to destroy the ballots? Seeing none, it is so thanked and ordered. Uh, the yeah. Yes. Yes, the 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 vote totals will be published in the minutes. Yeah. Yes, the breakdown of voting will be published in the minutes, correct. Um that's not what I was ordering to be destroyed, it was the actual ballots. Okay. The tellers are thanked and the ballots are ordered to be destroyed. Okay, so we are now moving to E.7, independent films. Before we get started, is there any objection to the body of the chair reminding you all or informing you all of the results of the consultative vote that was, uh, that was conducted? Okay, hearing none, I will do so. I didn't want you, feel, you all to feel that I was unfairly uh, preferencing anything. So there was a consultative vote of the membership conducted online uh, prior to the convention. There were uh, 1,260 total votes with 42.3% um, in favor and 52.7% against. 42.3% in favor 57.7% against. I don't have the exact number of votes, but you can pull out a calculator and do the math if you would like to. Okay, I'm going to suggest a total debate time of four minutes for this. Is there any objection to four minutes? Hearing none, debate time is set at four minutes. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor?
I will once again remind the body that there is only one presiding officer in this room. It has been moved and seconded to postpone the ratification of this item indefinitely. It is my ruling that ratifications are special orders and therefore cannot be postponed indefinitely. However, if the body would wish to suspend the rules to do so, that would be an order. Do you wish? An objection to consideration would be out of order, and I don't think I would allow that to be suspended. Okay, so the motion to suspend, yes. Correct. Uh, I will restate. The question is, does a vote to suspend the rules require a greater majority than, the, than a vote to simply defeat the ratification on its face? And that is correct. The motion to suspend the rules has been moved and seconded. Okay. And to be clear, the motion to suspend the rules is a two-thirds vote, but is neither debatable nor amendable. Postpone indefinitely, while also a two-thirds vote is debatable. So we are only voting on the motion to suspend the rules so that we can then make a motion to postpone indefinitely. All those in favor of suspending the rules to allow us to postpone, to move to postpone E.7 indefinitely, all those in favor of suspending the rules, raise the hand. Thank you, those against, and the motion does not pass and the rules are not suspended. The item before us is E.7 with four minutes of debate time. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? Seeing none, is there anyone wishing to speak against? Mr. Barkley. Chris Barkley, he, him. I know a little thing about best dramatic presentation. <laughs> I agree that it needs reform, but this is not it. Independent films need to scruff along against major studios like everybody else. This isn't needed. We don't need this. Thank you. Thank you. That was a speech against. I will note that the captioning is back, just FYI. Um, is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? Okay, there has not been a speech in favor. I'm going to... Okay, is there anyone wishing to speak against? Okay, is there anyone else wishing to speak in, speak in favor? Is there anyone else wishing to speak in favor? Given that there are no motions in favor, there are no speeches in favor, I'm gonna ask again, is there anyone wishing to speak against? Okay, since there is, is it two total minutes or two minutes? No, the standing rule. Okay, so there's currently less than two minutes, so it would require a suspension of the rules. I'm going to... It's two total? Okay. Okay, here's the thing. I'm. We have some procedural stuff we have to figure out. I'm going to recognize a speech against while we do that because that will not take any more time. Who wants to speak against? Okay. I'm going to recognize Olav. Thank you, Mixed Chairperson. I just want to say this shouldn't just be defeated. It needs to be defeated with prejudice because w the Hubos are not equipped to handle items that are not widely available. A vast majority of our membership and the voting public are unable to see these items during the eligibility period. Also, there is a definitional problem where movies that should not be considered for an independent Hugo Award could definitely be considered for one. The, the uh, last year's winner, Everything Everywhere All at Once, is by an independent studio. I, the uh, Avatar 2, Way of the Water, was by IAC Films, which is classed as an independent. There is no definition that excludes those that allows us to celebrate the smaller things like Molly and Max in the future, which I proposed a, 
extension of eligibility because it's a great movie and I want people to see independent films. I believe independent films should be celebrated. This is not the way to do it. Thank you. That was a speech against. Is there anybody still we wishing to speak on this matter on either side? Seeing none, we will move to a vote. All those in favor of adoption of E.7 independent films, please raise the hand. Thank you. Those against? Thank you. The motion is not adopted. The next item before us is now E.8, eligibility criteria for non-English work on page 25. I am suggesting a debate time of two total minutes. Is there any objection to two minutes? Hearing none, debate time is set at two minutes. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? Is there anyone wishing to speak against? Seeing none, we will move to a vote. All those in favor of adoption of E.8, raise the hand. Thank you. Those against? Thank you. And the motion passes. And E.8 is adopted. This brings us to E.9, Best Fan Cast Not Paying Compensation, on page 26 of your agenda. I'm suggesting a total debate time of four minutes for this. Is there any objection to four minutes? Hearing none, debate time is set at four minutes. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? No? Okay. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? Um, the person in the green. Yeah, please give your badge to the secretary before he begins speaking. Kelsey Shapira, she, her. For context, I'm a booktuber on my own YouTube channel as well as a co-host of a monthly live stream project. I also nominate in this category every year. This change to the rules makes no sense to me either as a content creator or a nominating voter. Content creation in audio and video formats can be both monetarily costly and time consuming and it is par for the course for creators to attempt to defray some of these costs through some form of monetization, be it Patreon, the YouTube Partner Program, or what have you. Most are not turning a profit at this. If this amendment is meant only to disqualify fan casts taking in money over a certain amount, it needs to specify that. If it's not meant to apply to fan casts monetized through the platform on which they're published, such as YouTube, or TikTok, then it needs to be more clear on this point. I want to point out that on YouTube, the platform with which I'm most familiar, whether or not a channel is monetized is not public information. If this rule change goes into effect as written, I can imagine that the average nominator would be at sea as to whether anything is eligible in this category at all. Thank you. Okay, That was a speech against, and the time you're spending clapping is eating into the additional time. Is there any... I'm sorry, Wait, privilege. Okay, is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? It's a point of parliamentary inquiry. Yeah, this is long enough. Can you come to the mic? Uh, Rafe Richards, he, him. I, I do just want to check. According to the copy of the Wuspus Constitution currently available on the Wuspus website, best fan cast is 3.3.16, and this has been listed in the agenda as an amendment 3.3.15. We will, th so our rules also say that if there's issues with numbering, the secretary corrects yeah, it. Excellent. We'll assume Thank that it's amending the section that's about fan cast. Okay, is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? Uh, yes. Uh, not Nobody there moved. Was a motion to suspend the rules to, post to allow to postpone indefinitely, right? There was a member who said a thing yeah, and then I withdrew it. I mean, I, I recognize them, but then they immediately withdrew their motion. That, that is true, and I will apologize to the member because I will, 
I did forget to remind the body when you did all yell at the member that y'all aren't the presiding officer. Um, I didn't mean for this to become my catchphrase, but it has become so. <laughs> so I do apologize to the member for the behavior of the body. Um, I think we're still looking for a speech in favor. Do you wish to speak in favor? Yeah. Okay. Joshua Cronengold, he, him. So I appreciate the concerns of the previous speaker, but um, this does specify a strong and obvious distinction. It does not say if you take in any money, um, you can't qualify as fan cast. It says if you pay people, which is to say if you take profits. Okay, you once again, please don't try and correct the member on their debate. That's not in order. Okay, uh, that was a speech in favor. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? I will recognize the person in the blue. Uh, Claire Russo, she, her, I'm a two-time Best Fan Cast finalist, um, and I would like to point out that I, I don't think the wording is clear. I also think the fact that the phrase non-professional is already included makes the amendment redundant. Um, paid its contributor or staffs m monetarily. Um, I'm not a big operation. Under UK tax law, I do a thing called salary sacrificing, which means that I pay every cost out of my personal account and I receive every money into my personal account. I literally don't know if I've made a profit and I would very much like the body to not make me look into how much money it is costing me to do this. 10 seconds. Please and thank you. Okay. Uh, yes. Um, okay, that was a speech against. Is there anyone else wishing to speak in favor? Okay, and the white. Mixed chairperson, I'm Kendall Bullen, he, him. Uh, I just want to point, point uh, sorry. I just want to point out that a lot of people are throwing around terms that are not in this amendment. It doesn't say make a profit. It says paying contributors of staff, which at least to me does not, is not the same thing as you make a profit. So I'm in favor. Okay, that was a speech in favor. Is there anyone else wishing to speak against? I will recognize uh, the person in, the, well, you're all in black and white shirts, but the middle of the three of you. Um, how much time is remaining? Uh, nine seconds. Okay. Sorry, I should have asked that first. The, sorry. Uh, Mixed Chair, does, would this mean that the Hugo Committee has to audit the books for all of these in order to determine whether they paid people and how much? I'm taking that as a rhetorical question and debate. Okay, time and against the amendment has elapsed, or the ratification has elapsed. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? Okay, seeing none, we will move to a vote. All those in favor of ratification of E.9, best fan cast not paying compensation, please raise the hand. Thank you. All those against, thank you. And it fails and is not adopted. I'm gonna silence my own noise making device that is apparently not silenced. Okay. The next item before us is E.10, language requirement, also on page 26. I am suggesting a debate time of two minutes. Is there any objection to two minutes? Hearing none, debate time is set at two minutes. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? I, I'm sorry, parliamentary inquiry? Okay. Please come to the microphone. Uh, 
Kadesh of he him. Could the chair clarify, first of all, whether in the second sentence, in the middle of the uh, work, work to be the words to be added, does and is does that and equal and or? And if it doesn't, if it was or instead, would that be a greater or lesser change? I can I can conceive of a time when the current committee speaks one language, the previous committee speaks a second language, but the book has already come out in the language of the preceding committee. So does it have to satisfy both or either? that means if the language is Okay, so I'm gonna, okay, so the question was whether the and in languages of the countries of the administering and priors world cons functions as an and or like if changing it, how it functions and then if changing it to an or would be a greater or lesser change. Okay, so my first answer is that it functions as an and and so if it is language A or B, I mean, it, this isn't an inclusive, exclusive or situation, like language A and language B, if it's in language A or language B or both, if it's in something other than language A and B, then it is um, eligible in the first year it's issued, et cetera. The next question about changing it to an or. I, I, Mr. Pomeranz, please lawyer me. <laughs> I, mi mixed chairperson, I, I am reluctant to interfere with your masterful con conduct of this meeting. I, I suggest, however, that this is not a matter before you, that the interpretation of the language that was passed by the last WISFIS meeting at Chengdu uh, and the language that is currently before us as written in both the agenda and presented to us uh, in, uh, well, not on the screen yet, um, is subject to interpretation, but not by the chair of the WISFIS business meeting, but by any future Hugo administration should this body decide to ratify the amendment. Yeah, you're correct. Thank you. Yeah, I don't get to decide what qualifies for Hugo Awards. Thank God. Um, that's other people's jobs. Um, thank you for helping me get out of that spiral. Um, so that's my ruling. I know it doesn't, no, I know it doesn't answer the second question. No, I, my, my ruling is that if I am unsure if, the change would change the meaning, then it is a greater change. So it would be a greater change. Okay. What is before us is E.10, which I set a debate time of two minutes, right? Okay. Is there anyone wishing, we haven't had any speeches, right? Yes, Great. Okay. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? 
Okay, so I'm gonna remind the body that because of our rules, when you call the question before there's been any debate, it requires us to spend the rules and then call the question and takes up a lot of time and I've only set two minutes of debate time for this. Does the member still wish to make the motion? Okay, is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? The motion was withdrawn. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? Is there anyone wishing to speak against? Okay, Mr. Walkoff, can you bring the mic? Thank you, Mixed Chairperson. Lou Walkoff, uh, he, him. Uh, I'd like to give a specific example regarding 3.4.2. Works originally published outside Scotland or China and, f and first published in Scotland and China in the previous calendar year shall also be eligible. Works published outside Scotland and works published outside Scotland, China shall also be eligible. Uh, I think that if you look at the current l slate of Hugo nominees for this year, you'll find that all of them originated, uh, originated outside of one or the other of those countries. Uh, the language problem is equally pr problematic unless you somehow arrange that at a minimum, Ten every seconds. other year you have, an, you have the world count in an Anglophana country. That was a speech against and time against has now elapsed. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? Okay, seeing none, we will move to a vote. All those in favor of ratification of E.10 language requirement, please raise the hand. Thank you, all those against, thank you. And it fails, and the motion and the change is not ratified. You're good. Okay, that is going to bring us to E.11 Convention Generalization. I'm going to recommend a debate time of two minutes. Is there any objection to two? Yes. Okay, that's, okay, so the second part was a speech, and we're going to, that's irrelevant. You have moved to um, take up something out of order to take up E.12 before E.11. This requires a two-thirds vote. Is there a second? Hearing none, the motion is not before us, and we'll move to E.11. Um, I believe I... Yeah, you didn't object to two minutes, so that's where we are. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor of E.11? Donald Eastlake, he, him. Uh, I believe this motion was originally proposed by the Nitpicking and Fly Specking Committee, which I chair, and it really just generalizes things. It means that no further changes uh, in these areas are necessary should we decide at some point to add an, as an aspect or to delete the NASFIC or both or something else like that. It just makes things gentler and, and less wordy. So certain people who have complained in previous speeches about increasing in verbiage <laughs> in the Constitution <laughs> should favor this amendment. That was a speech in favor. Is there anyone wishing to speech ag speak against? Okay, all set. I have difficulties with the term selected committees. Um, selected co convention, conventions, et cetera, et cetera, because it says nothing about how th what conventions are selected and by whom and all of that. I think it is much too indefinite. Okay, Indef that was a speech against. How much time do we have remaining in favor? 30 seconds. Three or 30? 30. 30, okay. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? Kevin Stanley, he, him. Next chair, I think it should be 
fundamentally obvious that if we are talking about a document of the World Science Fiction Society and we talk about selected conventions, we are talking about conventions selected by a WUSFUS sanctioned convention, whether it be a Worldcon or a NASFIC or any other convention that we may tend to add. And therefore, Ten seconds. Therefore, I don't see any problem. And yes, I was trying to run out the clock. Thank you. <laughs> That was a speech in favor. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? Okay, seeing none, we'll move to a vote. All those in favor of ratification of E.11 convention generalization, please raise the hand. Thank you. All those against? And it passes and, and E.11 is ratified. That brings us to E.12, establishment of ASFIC on page 27. I'm going to set a total, or sorry, recommend rather, a total debate time of four minutes. Is there any objection to four minutes? Are you objecting? Well, I, well, hold on, oh, once again, y'all, it's one presiding officer, it's me. I know what the member's doing, so I'm good. Is there any objection to four total minutes of debate time? Hearing none, debate time is set at four minutes. I will now recommend, Ms. recommend, recognize, rather, the member. I, I changed it all. <laughs> I, I move to postpone the yes. And suspend the rules in order to do so. Yes, ma'am. Yes, Mr. Chairperson. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> it has been moved. Is there a second? Second. Okay. It has been moved and seconded to suspend the rules in order to allow us to take up whether or not to postpone indefinitely E.12. The motion to suspend the rules is neither debatable nor amendable and requires a two-thirds vote. As a reminder, this is just about whether or not we will then take the vote on postponing indefinitely. All those in favor of suspending the rules, please raise the hand. Thank you. All those against? I do not believe that was a two-thirds majority, and so the suspension of the rules does not pass. We are back to E.12 before us. With a total, please, I have troubles when the front row is talking loud enough for me to hear them. Um, what is before us is E.12 with a total debate time of four minutes. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? Uh, Donnelly's Lake, <coughs> Donnelly's Lake he, him. Um, I must admit that I actually wrote the very last section that defines Asia, because that was missing when this motion originally it was made in Chengdu. I'm uh, somewhat ambivalent, actually, I guess, but I think it would be a very interesting experiment. It does have an automatic expiration clause, so that if we do uh, ratify this, it's not like it's going to stick around. It's going to, there will be, I think, at most, would be at most uh, four NASFIX before it would automatically go away. We can see what happens. I don't really have any idea what will happen. Uh, the first time there might be one would be 2027, and it does happen that there is an Asian bid for 2027 because Israel is inside Asia as defined by this uh, motion. So I, I just think people should uh, consider whether this would be an interesting experiment uh, that we should adopt in its current form, which includes the sunset clause. Okay, that was a speech in favor. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? Harry Ann Lurie, she, her. I think the NASPIC was a bad idea, and the ASPIC is an even worse idea. It is not any evidence whatsoever that there is any group outside of Chengdu that wants to host ASPICs, and just because it might be interesting to see what happens isn't a good reason to add it to the Constitution. Okay, that would just speech against. How much time is remaining in favor? We have one minute and 14 seconds in favor. Okay, is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? Seth Breitbart, he, him. I would like to move to amend the language to be consistent with E3 as passed. Okay, so the motion is to, so E3 is the consistent change that changes a whole bunch of supporting to WISFUSes. Yeah, I was about to say that. I'm going to remind everyone again, it's my job to make rulings. 
Um, I'm going to consider that to be an editorial revision, um, especially considering that we have adopted E3, and so the should E12 be adopted, um, it would be edited to reflect the consistent change in E3. Okay, is there anyone, I'm on favor still, right? Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? I move the previous question. Second. Okay, the previous question has been moved and seconded. I believe we still have, we have over one total minute of debate time remaining, right? Okay, so it is in order. Is there anyone still wishing to speak? Okay, I do see people still wishing to speak, so we will move to a vote. All those in favor of calling the question and ending debate, please raise the hand. Thank you. All those opposed, thank you. And the motion passes and um, debate has been ended. We will move to a vote on the adoption of E.12. All those in favor of ratifying E.12, establishment of the ASFIC, please raise the hand. I, I do still, I need to continue with the vote. So thank you. Thank you. That was directed at y'all, thanks. Okay, all those opposed, please raise the hand. Thank you. And the motion is failed and E.12 is not adopted. Yep. We're going to stop for 10 minutes, actually, because um, we are close to our bio break time. And it seems like the break between the E's and the F's is a good place to take a break. So we will reconvene at 1.57. Is it running out? Okay, give me one moment. What, what kind of charger do you need? It's a regular USB-C. I, I, I got it. Have one. Okay. Okay, Ira's getting a charger for it. Um, I've got, okay, I've got A to C, and you can also use mine if you need it. There's a Sorry, the power not. strip that I have down there has okay. USB-A. Okay. See if, uh, see if you can do that. Or you can okay, use can you, there's a power strip down there that has a USB. Can you plug that in? USB, which is the yeah, so okay. there's a little board. Yeah, I'll, I'll Chris will take you. Chris will take you. Yeah. Yes. I understand.
We are two minutes past the time I said we would be reconvening, so we're going to reconvene. We are back in order. I need all conversations to cease and members to take their seats. Okay. <sighs> right. Okay. We're going to move to the F's. Our new constitutional changes. So we are starting with F1. So as a reminder, per the standing rule change that we enacted way back on Friday, for the items that have come up in the first pass, they've come up during a main business meeting, and so a motion to postpone indefinitely would not be in order. Once we get to F14, such motions would be in order. However, I will remind the body that by our standing rules, the motion to postpone indefinitely is automatically by default assigned four minutes of debate time, and it requires a two-thirds vote. I would remind the body to think about the debate times that I've been proposing and use that to consider whether or not a motion to postpone indefinitely will actually accomplish what you wish. Okay. We are going to move to F.1, which is on a page 28. 28. F.1, missing in action. I am recommending a total debate time of two minutes to this. Is there any objection to two minutes? Hearing none, debate time is set at two minutes. Um, would one of the makers of the motion like to speak to it? Warren, take notes, because our secretary is going to speak. This amendment came up because as uh, Linda Denneroff, she, her, as we were working on the um, conversion of voters to the database for Seattle in 2025, we noted that there were guests of memberships or people had purchased two memberships intending to give one to someone else. I'm talking about WISFIS memberships. And since there was, there was no reason not to change these memberships or give refunds when there was a mistake, um, we went ahead and ba on a case-by-case -case basis did so. This amendment simply says that until such time as a vote is taking place, whether it's site selection or you go in, uh, voting or nominations, that, that these changes can be made. Thank you. That was a speech in favor. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? Harry Ann Lurie, she, her. I just have a question. It says that if the member dies, the membership is transferred to the estate of the decedent. I just want you to answer me whether or not the estate of the decedent is, is considered a natural person or not. So that question is directed at me. The estate is not a natural person because it's not a person. Well, it's a legal person. It's not a people person. <laughs> Um, it's not a natural person. Okay, so no, an estate would not be a natural person. Okay, um, is there anyone wishing to speak against? Joshua Cronengold, he, him. Um, I move to strike the word accidental, accidentally. In, um, in this motion, because we are not mind readers. Can you remind, where, line? Oh, there it is, line three, okay. So it has been moved and seconded to strike the word accidentally, so that um, point A would read, when a person purchases a WISPIS membership for someone without providing a name or purchases a duplicate membership. It has been seconded. Do you wish to speak to it? Okay. Um, so the total time remaining is divided between, so it's going to be like it, a it, few seconds on each side. Yeah, it's going to be like 30. Do you wish to speak against? I to okay. I think it's a greater change. Go ahead. I, I th hmm? Okay. One presiding officer. Thank you. What is the member's point? I, I, I actually am not certain I'm right, so I asked the chair to determine whether or not it is appropriate to take this up. 
because I'm not sure that we can amend with a greater change at this point, and I think this is one. This is a new constitutional change, oh, not a ratification. <laughs> <laughs> there, at this point, they're all greater changes. <laughs> okay. Is there anybody wishing to speak against the amendment? Okay, is there anybody else? I'm, I'm sorry, you wish to speak against? Yeah. Okay, how much time is remaining? Um, if we're not counting that, we have 31 seconds each side. Let's not count that. <laughs> um, I wonder if the intent here is to actually, to be able to pr transfer the membership to an actual person, uh, transferring it to um, someone's estate does not seem to be. That is not germane. The no. debate is on the amendment, which is purely about striking the word accidentally. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Is there anyone wishing? <laughs> is there, is there anyone wishing to speak against the amendment? Is there anybody else wishing to speak in favor? Oh, the amendment. Okay. Seeing no speeches about the amendment, we will move to a vote. All those in favor of striking the word accidentally, raise the hand. Thank you. All those opposed, thank you. And the amendment passes. Can I restate the motion first? Okay, the item now before us is F.1 as amended. So that point A now reads, when a person purchases a WISFIS membership for someone without providing a name or purchases a duplicate membership. That is the item before us, is F.1 as amended. What is your question? I withdraw. Okay. Sorry. How much total debate time do we have left? Any? Uh, I think it's under 10 seconds. Okay, we're gonna say debate time has elapsed. We have had substantive debate on this matter. All those in favor of F.1, please raise the hand. Thank you. All those opposed, and it passes. I'm not going to say after everyone that these will go on to um, Seattle for ratification, but it's going to do that. One moment. Try. Okay, one moment. Okay, we are going to move on to F.2, the way we were. I'm going to recommend a total debate time of four minutes. Is there any objection to four minutes? Hearing none, debate time is set at four minutes. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? Linda, do you want to speak in favor of it as a proposer, or do you want Kevin to? Okay. We have a team of four, after all. So. Kevin Stanley, he um, mixed chairperson. As I recall, I was one of the co-sponsors of the proposal that turned things the way they are now. I have the right to decide that I made a mistake. I had hoped that it would make things better. I don't think it has. It has confused people in a way that I did not really anticipate. It has made things less clear and harder for people to understand. I think people under, understand the concept of a supporting membership and an attending membership better than they understand this separation of membership types. I think we need to go back to the older terminology, although we can continue to make it not possible to transfer the supporting membership. Though that means if you've got an attending membership, uh, you to transfer it, you the person you're transferring it to would have to also purchase a supporting membership, and I think that would retain. So I, I do believe that's what would happen. Is that not right, Ms. Dinero? Yeah. yeah. So I think we made a mistake. I think we've confused more people than we've helped. So let's go ahead and go back to something that works. Okay. That was the speech in favor. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? What? 
I'm sorry, you needed to address the chair, not another member. What is your point of inquiry? Do you, do you have a parliamentary inquiry? Okay, so that would be debate. So I'm gonna recognize the person in the black and white stripe. I'm, I'm trying to not privilege names for some people and not others. Kate Secor, she, her. I am somewhat distressed by the tendency of this body to think that our failure and ability to explain things means that we need to change the Constitution. Maybe we need to change how we explain things. There are in infinite numbers of professional societies where you become a member of the society and then you buy a ticket to go to the convention. You're really going to tell me you think WSPS members are stupider than members of the IEEE? Have you met them? <laughs> that was the speech against. Is there anyone else wishing to speak in favor? I'm going to remind the body to not pop up to speak until I'm ready to ask. No, you were good. Until you're ready, until I ask if there are speeches in favor. So the two folks over on the left here that aren't Dr. Adams, did you have a privileged matter or were you just wanting to make a speech? Okay, then I'm going to recognize you for a speech again in favor. Linda Robinette, she, her, the Chengdu people actually did an excellent job of explaining this. And even though I'd been going to Worldcon for years, it's the only reason I understood it. I had understood supporting memberships for years. So even though I'd been in and out of these conventions, it confused even a long-term member. And the IEEE people are pretty smart. That was a speech in favor. Is there anyone wishing to speak against in the purple? Alan Fleming, he, him, mixed chairperson. We just haven't given it enough time to bed in yet. We are... Closer we to the mic. We just haven't given this time enough to bed in yet. Uh, supporting and attending memberships were uh, terminology that were understood for a very long period of time. We are making a change. It's in the process of being understood. Every convention that repeats it will make more people understand it. Okay. That was a speech against. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? I'm going to recognize the person in the blue, who I believe is one of the proposers. Teal, yellow. It's a shade of blue. How much time? We have 26 seconds remaining, four. Hi, I'm Kevin Black, he, he, him. I'm on the Seattle team, and I can report that this has been very difficult both to administer and explain because of the complexity of needing to sell these different memberships and then upgrade between memberships. We still do not have a functioning membership portal one year out after being selected. And 10 seconds. And the only way to upgrade or et cetera is to email registration at, it's been an extreme pain point, please adopt this amendment. Time. Okay, time in favor has elapsed. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? Okay, I'm gonna recognize Elspeth. We are not more stupid than the IEEC. We are a totally different organization than they are. You know, they are very professional. They do all sorts of things between meetings. They publish papers. We don't do that. The basis, basic reason for membership, supporting membership, is you are supporting a convention. Now, I was entirely in favor of this before, I think we go back to what our people understand, not what professional organizations would understand. Because we're us. I, I believe that was a speech in favor. Okay, time in favor has elapsed. How much time was remaining for speeches against? Minute, 10 seconds. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? Okay, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna cut it in half 
and say that there's 30 seconds left. Um, but I'll recognize you for a speech against. That's what it would have been anyway. Yeah. Oh, well. Do you want me to do 45 seconds? Okay, you know what? It's a minute, whatever. Go ahead. Speech against. Jason Spitzer, he, him. Oh, sorry. Do you want this out? I'll come up after. Jason Spitzer, he, him. Uh, I'll be quick. Uh, it seems to me that while this is a new system, it seems to protect us, although it may be hard to explain at points. We'll get over that. As people have said, the longer this lasts, we'll figure out how to explain it. Uh, we can figure out and iron out administration points. Um, we are a smart community, and this seems to protect us from issues that arise between different conventions, which cost drastically different amounts of money, um, one of which happened recently with no, no blame, just this would help to make a separate WISFUS membership and members in WISFUS could then vote and do other things separate from the attending supplement. So I hope we uh, do not adopt the way we were, but rather stay the way we are now. Thank you. Kay. That was the speech against. Is there any time in favor has expired? Is there any, wh how much time do we have? We have 23 seconds. Okay, is there anybody else wishing to speak against? Okay, the person with the awesome hair. I know awesome hair when I see it. Patricia Wayne, they, them. Uh, as someone who's newer to Worldcons and who often explains how these things work to uh, uh, people who are completely new to Worldcons, I can tell you that in my experience, the way we are is much easier to explain to outsiders Ten that we seconds. would like to become insiders than the way we were. Okay, thank you. That was a speech against. I'm going to say that time has expired. So we're going to move to a vote. All those in favor of F.2, the way we were, please raise the hand. Thank you. All those against. Okay, and I'm going to say that the ayes have it and the motion passes. Okay, I'm going to, very, according to our standing rules, it does require 10% of the body for a division. I'm going to ask for those who would like a division and a counted vote to raise the hand. That is not 10% of the body, and so we will not do a division, and the motion passes. And it comes up again next year, but I'm not saying that every time. Because we all, well, okay, we may not all know how the new constitutional changes work, but I'll remind us at the end. There, the slide says that these items will be passed to the 2025 World Conference. There we go. The slides say it. Okay. That brings us to F.3, Required License Agreement, on page 29. I'm going to recommend a total debate time of two minutes for this. Is there any objection to two minutes? Hearing none, debate is set at two minutes. Would the chair of the MPC or somebody else from the MPC like to speak in favor of it? Donald Eastlake, he, him. I, I hope this is fairly self-explanatory. It uh, provides that uh, there can be a, there'll be a license agreement and uh, bidders and uh, their successive successor operating committees will be required to sign that uh, license agreement. And in order to protect against, you know, unduly severe or onerous agreements or something like that, it requires that this license agreement be approved by the Mark Protection Committee, which has representatives of this business meeting. And, uh, most of the members of the MPC represent the business meeting, and also representatives of selected conventions to help advise the MPC and uh, voting members. Okay, that was a speech in favor. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? Mixed chairperson, my name is Kent Bloom. And having been through this and having had to deal with the question of, for example, incorporating uh, a Worldcon after we have re ha actually been selected and various other things that happen that can cause the people who would, who would sign the, such an agreement to not be the people who would be bound by it uh, during, during the Worldcon, I think this is an attempt to do something that may not be even possible. And if it is possible, I'm not sure that these are the right words. So 
uh, I suggest we should uh, we, we should vote this down and let people work on it more uh, over the next year and possibly come back with something else. That was a speech against. How much time is remaining in favor? 25 seconds. Okay. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? In the blue. Joshua Krenigal, T. Him. I have spent far too much time talking to lawyers in the last few months on exactly this subject. And in order to maintain a service mark, you have to do commerce with it. This is a way to make sure that WISPIS is doing commerce with our marks so we can maintain them. Okay, that was a speech in favor. How much time is remaining against? 12 seconds. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? <laughs> Seeing none, we will move to a vote. All those in favor of F.3, required license agreement, please raise the hand. Thank you. All those against, thank you. The motion passes and will be passed on. And that brings us to F.4, MPC procedures. I'm going to recommend, also on page 29, I'm going to recommend a total debate time of six minutes. Is there any objection to six minutes? I that wasn't an objection, right? Cool, okay, so debate time will be set at six minutes and we will give the secretary a moment. I will ask while we do so, if somebody from the MPC, the chair or somebody else would like to speak to it, they can come to the mic to get ready to do that. Okay, are we ready? Okay. Uh, Donald Eastlake, he, him, uh, this is to provide uh, greater clarity and regularity for the MPC procedures. Uh, for example, uh, MPC has always assumed that a majority was the quorum, which sort of follows some Robert's rules, but this would make that clear when the MPC wants to act. Uh, also, there's no current provision whereby some members of the MPC can force there to be a meeting, for example, if the chair doesn't feel like holding one or something like that. This sort of basically adopts normal sort of standard uh, kinds of procedures for that sort of thing in a kind of a minimal form. Uh, currently, there's no specification of the officers of the MPC. This would provide that at least have to have a chair, secretary, and treasurer, which is the normal kind of thing. They can have other officers. And uh, it's very common for our treasurer not to have actually been a voting member, so you can have officers who aren't voting members. All that's provided for in here. And this last question is a removal of MPC members. So there's two classes of MPC members. Uh, no particular provisions seem to be needed for members who are appointed by Worldcons because they can remove and re replace those any time they want. The question is elected members. And uh, the view in this is that elected members are elected to represent a particular business meeting and part of the strength and stability of the MPC comes from the fact that these members are elected from different business meetings held at widely different geographic locations in different years. So. Uh, for example, this business meeting, if you're here, you might say, I want to be able to throw all the bums out. Well, you know, <laughs> do you want the people who are elected by this business meeting to be able to be removed by some different business meeting? Uh, perhaps not. So that this provides that removal, which I think should be a very rare and unusual case, is done by a two-thirds vote of the MPC. Okay, that was a speech in favor. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? I will recognize the person in the ferns. The, yeah, you, orange mask, yes. Alexis Layton, he, him. I'm concerned that this language uh, seems to indicate that the chair need not be a voting member. And I wish to amend to add after the, in the second sentence of the addition, officers other than the chair need not be elected or appointed members. Okay, so it has been moved and seconded. So the um, change would be that in the sentence, which is the, um, starts on the first line that's blue, where it says officers need not be elected or appointed, it would say, it would add other than the chair after officers. It would be officers to insert other than the chair after officers. So it would read officers other than the chair need not be elected or appointed, et cetera. 
It has been moved and seconded. What is the total amount of time remaining for debate on this item? Uh, it's less than five minutes, one moment. Okay, so it's gonna be less than five total minutes. Are you gonna wanna speak to your amendment? Okay. Um, while the timekeeper figures out how much time we're gonna have on each side, is there anybody wishing to speak in favor? Is there anyone wishing to speak against? Okay. Uh, we're gonna have 155 to a side. Okay, so 155 to a side, I will recognize in the purple in the back. We're good. No, more down. All right. Uh, chair, uh, Tammy Cox and she, her. Uh, chair is a position that requires a set of skills. We could have a perfectly adequate um, MPC committee, great people who could do all sorts of great things and might ha have the skills to chair the meeting. Uh, so I think it's important to uh, leave that as an option to have an external chair. Okay, that was a speech against. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? Okay. On the side. Yep, you in the uh, Elspeth. I agree with Tammy, the previous speaker, that an outside chair is sometimes needed. I don't think this amendment makes that any more or less possible because it says there's a treasurer, an officer etc. need not be elected or appointed. Leaves people free to bring in somebody outside. I believe the speaker's speech is not germane because it's on the text as in the uh, underlying motion, not on the amendment which changes that sentence. Okay. Okay. Is there anyone wishing to speak Amendment doesn't do anything. Okay. Is there anybody else wishing to speak? Is there anybody wishing to speak in favor? Yep. Okay. Rex Jesperson, Ray Richards, he, him. I will confess I may be speaking from a position of ignorance here. And if anyone knows me, that is a very big admission to make. But. Uh, if the MPC works like every other body I have been ever been on or heard of, the chair has one has one key responsibility which cannot be delegated, which is to break ties. Therefore, they must presumably be an elected appointed member in order to be able to vote to do that. Okay, that was a speech in favor of the amendment. Is there anybody else wishing to speak against? Were you, okay, in the Paisley? Mixed chairperson, my name is Joni Brill Dashoff. The MPC committee right now has a quandary if this is adopted because our treasurer, who is required to be a member a resident, excuse me, of California is an ex officio member because we did not reelect okay, I'm gonna Bruce Farr. I believe the debate is not germane because the amendment is only about making the chair not. No, no. Right now you can have ex officio for secretary, chair, and treasurer. If you change it so it's only chair, no, that can the, be ex officio. No, the amendment does the opposite, so the debate is not germane. I'm sorry, but it is true that we absolutely have to have. I understand, but the debate is not germane, and so the member is out of order. Is there anybody else wishing to speak against the amendment? Uh, the yes. Don Lee, thank you, him. A uh, parliamentary inquiry concerns the role of a chair in voting. It's my understanding that a uh, chair can vote whenever it changes the outcome. So, for example, if there's a tie, the chair can break that tie. If there's uh, one down on one side, the chair can vote to create a tie. That a tie means the motion loses, is lost. 
there's no requirement that a, a chair have to have a vote uh, to be able to dis do that. The, the body always comes to a decision. If there's a tied vote, whatever motion was, was not passed. So if the chair can vote, they could break it. If the chair can't vote, then they can't break it, so and it's still lost. I will say this is less of a parliamentary inquiry because you're not asking me a question, and it's more a speech about the amendment. Okay. But do you want to say, is that correct at the end? Yes. <laughs> okay. That is correct. Is there anyone wishing to speak? against the amendment. Actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take that as a speech against because it really was. It really was. Okay, is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? Okay, is there anybody else? Do we have time left on against? Um, yes, we actually, uh, I believe we had a minute left actually before you. Okay, so we have about a minute, maybe a little less left against. Is there anybody wishing to speak against? Okay. Somewhat to uh, Kevin Stanley, he, him, mixed chair, just to, I think, clarify my, what my colleague said. It is not necessary to have a tie-breaking vote. It doesn't matter whether the chair has a vote in the body. Ties lose. A vote of five to five, there's no prevail, the, the, the uh, five in favor, five against, there's not a majority in favor. Therefore, you could have a non-member presiding officer who has no vote in the body. You can have an even number of members of your body. You can have an odd number of members. There's no magic involved in this. This is parliamentary law. It's just not what you're used to in your sandlot parliamentary rules. I'm going to rule that last bit out of order. It was a bit degrading. Okay. Is there anybody wishing to speak in favor of the amendment? In the back, in the blue. How much time do we have left in favor? Minute 28. Okay. Garrett Kavanagh, he, him. I believe the position of chair is so important that it should be someone who is elected or appointed by a convention committee rather than someone selected by the MPC. They must be responsible to external body. Okay, that was a speech in favor of the amendment. How much time is remaining against? 16 seconds. Okay, 16 seconds. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? Is there anyone else wishing to speak in favor? See none. Did you already speak on the amendment or on the underlying motion? Oh, you did, you were the proposer. I, my apologies. Okay, and you didn't speak on it. So if you would like to speak in favor of it, that's in order. Alexis Layton, he, him. Uh, it's perfectly fine for committees like this to get facilitators who are not members of the committee to help them organize and run things. They don't have to be the chair. I'm saying it's uh, perfectly reasonable for committees to get facilitators that are not members of the committee if they need more organization during their me meetings. Okay, that was a speech in favor. Is there anyone else wishing to speak against? Is there anyone else wishing to speak in favor? Seeing none, we will move to a vote. All those in favor of the amendment, which is to, excuse me, add or insert after officers the phrase other than the chair so that it would read officers other than the chair need not be elected or appointed. All those in favor of the amendment, please raise the hand. Thank you. All those against, thank you. The motion does not pass. And so we are back to F.4 um, as originally submitted. Where do we have any time for debate left? We had a little bit. Okay, so probably. Yeah, Okay, so we have 32 seconds left in favor and a little over two minutes left against. Is there anyone wishing to speak against the motion? Okay, in the words. They're all wearing black and white over there, so I have to figure out other ways. Uh, Cliff Dunn, he, him. I move to amend by striking from 1.8.x the word elected. Okay, is there a second? 
okay, it has been moved and seconded to amend by striking the word elected from section 1.8.x so that it would read, members of the Mark Protection Committee may, may be removed only by a two-third vote of that committee. Um, so we're gonna have about doing the math. Oh, we like, have two minutes and 45 seconds total. Left. Total, so a minute and 20-ish. Okay. Do we Parliamentary inquiry. Next chairperson, if this amendment passes and is taken up and is eventually passed, does that mean it can then Directing speech to me doesn't mean you have to look at me. Sorry. It's just easier because I'm. Um, if this passes and the whole lot, does that mean that a convention committee cannot remove a member of the Mark Protection Committee that they originally appointed? Yes, that would be correct. It would mean the only mechanism to remove an appointed member, a member appointed by the convention, would be for the Mark Protection Committee to elect to do so. Correct. Okay. Do you wish to speak in favor? Yes. Okay. Uh, Clifton, he, him. My reason for moving this is very simple. It is entirely possible to envision a situation where you have a problematic member of the MPC that a convention refuses to remove and you know who, who is genuinely causing problems. I believe there may be a current situation where the MPC would have voted to remove somebody if they had the ability to, but they can't. Also, I would point out that it is entirely possible for a, a long-term absentee member problem to arise in either category, and it would behoove the MPC to be able to actually push that person out if they're just not showing up for years. I haven't asked for anyone to speak. It, that was a speech in favor. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? Hey, I will recognize you. Is this on? Okay, Perry and Lurie, she, her. While I agree that there probably needs to be a mechanism to remove the appointed members, we should not uh, prohibit the, the appointing body from removing their own appointed members. We should perhaps increase the ability to remove those members, but we should not decrease it. Okay, there's been a request for information. So the question is if the, we're removing the word only from this would accomplish what the proposer is Absolutely. saying. Right. Yeah, correct. I believe that such an amendment would accomplish that, though I would remind the body that per our rule, second order amendments are not generally allowed. I am also going to temporarily turn the chair, the chair over to the deputy chair because I need to take a quick bio break. So I will leave you all in Warren's hands. All right, we're waiting for a speech in favor. Does anyone wish to speak in favor? Uh, the, the member in the back, would, do you wish to speak in favor? Please come forward to state the amendment. Uh, that's Tammy. Yeah. No, you, you, you have to state what the amendment is. You have to state what the amendment is when you move to suspend the rules. All right, move to suspend the rules to allow a second order amendment. The amendment would be to remove, also remove the word only so that this would read members of the Mark Protection Committee may be removed by a two thirds vote of that committee. Second. All right, it has been seconded. The motion to suspend the rules is not itself debatable, requires a two-thirds majority. The underlying amendment will be debatable, and therefore we will proceed to the vote on the motion to suspend the rules. Those in favor of the motion to suspend the rules, please raise a hand. Thank you. 
Those opposed to the motion to suspend the rules, please raise a hand. The ayes have it. The rules are suspended. And the question of the second order amendment to strike the word only uh, as well is now before the body. Do we have, would the maker of the motion like to make a speech in favor of the second order amendment? Okay. Uh, we have 52 seconds for each of these. Is there anyone who would like to make a speech against the amendment? Anyone else who'd like to speak in favor of the amendment? In the back, are you rising to make a speech? Yes. Please come forward. Lisa Hayes, she, her. According to what I'm reading in this, this would fix the problem that's put in the back where it said, there should be a means by removing any group or appropriate. We feel this does not uh, need for appointed members who can be removed by the appointed convention at any time. So this would put that back in. Thank you. Are there any speeches against the amendment, the second order amendment? Ron Oaks, he, him, I'm concerned that without the word only in there, this provides an alternative mechanism for elected members to be removed. Thank you. Are there any speeches in favor of the amendment, the second order amendment? Is your hand raised to make a speech or just a stretch? All right, hearing that, are there any, is there anyone else who would like to speak against the amendment? The second order amendment. We're pausing for the secretary, but if you, it, I, I will recognize you when the secretary gives me clearance. All right, the member in the scarf. <coughs> Didn't actually say. Is this a speech against or a, or a privileged motion or inquiry? It's a speech against the amendment. Okay, amendments. the second order amendment. Um, briefly, I am in favor of groups having some control over themselves. Um, I have just disagreed with what I was about to say, so please ignore me. Ten seconds. Is there anyone who'd like to speak in favor of the, the second order amendment? Anyone else against the second order amendment? Hearing none, the question before us is the second order amendment, which would make the amendment additionally strike the word only from section 1.8.x. All those in favor of the second order amendment, please raise a hand. Thank you. All those opposed, the ayes have it. The amendment now is to strike both the word elected at the beginning of the sentence and the word only from the sentence in 1.8.x. How much time is remaining? Uh, in favor of the first order amendment, 24 seconds against 46 seconds. All right, do we have any speeches remaining in favor of the amendment? Is there anyone who wishes to speak against the amendment? Yes. Kevin Stanley, he, him. Uh, Mr. Chairman, you've now in a position, if you pass this amendment, there's an implication that there's some other way to remove members because you've taken out the restriction that it's only applicable by, the, by way of the MPC. I don't think we want to do that. I don't think there should be any other way to remove members from the committee other 
than by the appointing authority for the appointed members or by the MPC itself for the elected members. You've opened up a can of worms. Thank you. Are there any speeches in favor of the amendment? Uh, Mr. Pomeranz, I believe you rose first after I finished speaking. Respectfully, that is not how I would interpret that if I were asked to provide um, an interpretation of this. Uh, in order to remove somebody, I would need to have some sort of explicit authority to do so. As far as I know, this is the only explicit authority to do so Ten in seconds. the Constitution. Do we have any other speeches against the amendment? Would anyone like to use the 10 seconds to make a speech for the amendment? Seeing none, we'll proceed to a vote on the amendment to strike both the word elected and the word only from section 1.x, 8.x. Those in favor of the amendment, please raise a hand. Thank you. Those opposed to the amendment, please raise a hand. The ayes have it and the underlying motion is amended to strike those two words. We have 10 seconds of remaining debate time for and 11 seconds of remaining debate time against the underlying motion. Do we have a speech in favor of the underlying motion? Do we have a speech against the underlying motion? Seeing none, we'll proceed to a vote on the underlying motion. Those in favor of passing for the first passage, F.4 MPC procedures, please raise a hand. Thank you. Those opposed to passing F.4 MPC procedures, please raise a hand. The ayes have it, and first passage of F.4 has been achieved. It will be passed on to Seattle. Okay. It is 2.46 p.m. The next item before us would be F.10.A, which is the portion of F.10 that we didn't get rid of. It's the software committee stuff. This is one of the areas where we had some fun yesterday. So I feel like we don't want to take it up. Looking at this list, are any of the members of F.17 editorial alignment in the room? Okay, then I don't think it would be fair to take that up. I really don't want to just get rid of 15 minutes on our schedule. No. Do you, Perry Ann, do you have a motion to make? Okay, ask your question. From the election for the uh, committee? The committee, yes. I do not believe so. Turns out counting seven seats and 14 nominees by hand is take some time. We will have it tomorrow morning. We'll finish counting after this. Yeah, we did the Mark Protection Committee. Unless anybody has a great idea of something they think we can get done in 12 minutes, I think we're going to adjourn a little early today. Okay.